I remember when I was 12, my parents and I, we took a tour at the Walt Disney Animation Studio in Orlando. And it was wonderful to actually see an animation studio. But however, it was apparent that the secrets that they have was definitely elusive to the outsider. You know, because here as a tourist, we were behind a plexiglass. So that plexiglass was pretty much like a solid metaphor for like that veil is mystery. But um, so flashing forward, you know, I, I still wanted to learn animation, but just it was impossible at the moment, at the time. Because in order to learn, you would have to go to out-of-state um university or a private college or even overseas and it was virtually impossible for me at the time earlier last year or so that i um started to take animation courses and i'm i'm telling you i have seen so many online animation courses but there was always so that veil of mystery flash forward um to this year, I came across AMB's um, YouTube channel, AMB Real Animators um, Training, and I was blown away. I just couldn't believe, you know, the knowledge that he was putting out there, the lectures that he was doing. It just pretty much ripped that veil of mystery off the face of the earth. And the thing that really sets his um, archive, his online, to, you know, lectures and stuff apart from everyone else is the basics. That's the one thing that a lot of the books, a lot of the online animation stuff lack was the extreme basics, you know. And when I started on that archive, I started understanding the spacing, the timing the arcs, the um, slow in, the slow out. And with each exercise, it builds up on each other. And as a result, I start seeing, you know, the arcs. I start understanding and timing things in my head. And it was just so fascinating. And because of that, it just helped revive, you know, my lifelong desire of learning animation and it just made me so happy that I'm able to pursue and to dream of becoming an animator. So thank you. So, are you going to join the library? Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, so it is Sunday. Sunday means uh, AMB Animation Real Animator Growth Development and Progress uh, Review Stream, which is uh, a look through the global AMB Animation Facebook community. Uh, to see what you guys have been posting, to have a look and to offer suggestions um, as to how you can move forward in a confident, advancing manner towards your goals, your dreams and ambitions. And it's my absolute pleasure to share this time with you. Um, but as you know, we begin uh, the stream with some drawing. So I can already see a very tempting suggestion there in the chat. Uh, but we begin the stream with some drawing. So if you guys would like to suggest a character that I will Google and I will analyze and deconstruct for you and tell you what I see as I draw it. And we all have some fun doing that before we look at people's work and get into a more serious matter of helping people move forward and advance to their ideals and uh, the realization of the becoming and transition from um, budding artist into real animator. Right, so let's uh, just say a few hellos while you suggest your uh, characters in the chat and we'll see what we have. 
we have got the awesome magpie kina i always throw kina in there uh saying hello the lovely hervonia baker cameron allen davidson black good to see you the adorable kitcher cat the dynamic druby the marvelous marco franco m marvelous fantastic marco franco um so magpie is really really tempting me with this one she's asking me to draw shira but to make shira thick now thick is a kind of uh, slang term but i think uh, magpie knows <laughs> where my uh, tendencies lie towards uh, the female form uh shall we say uh but uh, she's also suggesting um madam mim now i did some animation breakdown of madam mim a while ago so um heaven forbid i should choose to draw filmation shira over a marvelous one of milk cow's best in my opinion um we have mr creative hello to you sir uh, travis the insert anime he's on loin how are you doing uh hung ming hui uh charlene charlene giles has turned up um octavio velasquez um and there we are now i am just this is not about me embellishing designs because that'll just lengthen the stream kina but i might just take you up and we might look at shira and do a drawing of shira uh because i don't want to embellish it and try to play with the design uh since we've only had two suggestions and i've done madam mim before but i have never done of course some of you won't even know what i'm singing because you're probably all familiar with the newer one which i refuse to even acknowledge uh well i just did so there you go um i'm gonna look at the proper one shira filmation please i don't want to see these nasty cheap drawings of the new one i want to see something that is a little bit more appealing to my eyes okay well i'm just gonna do the head because um i think it is just gonna be we're just gonna do some facial the that her face is pretty much like a real woman's face drawn in a comic book style so let's just do that um we did a whole model sheet in the filmation style for kina before actually uh, but we're going to do that. Before I go, I'll just see there's been a little bit of chat going on. Um, ta -da. I've been streaming with Travis for a while. I went to bed and I'm on my phone. I saw you. And I thought, well, now you can come and watch me draw Shira for a little while, Magpie. And then when I start looking at people's work, no doubt you'll probably go off to uh, Betty Buys. Considering everyone is doing face studies, would you consider doing an actual human face, face breakdown? next week maybe maybe i just might do that um uh it's something that i regularly do uh so maybe i'll do that right okay so but uh we're gonna look at shira for the time being which is almost like looking at a real person's face so let me get rid of my face let me turn on my mic and let us start doing some drawing um right so it doesn't matter whether we're doing cartoon or um uh real if you want to put it that way um the first thing i like to do when making any of these as you all know is, is i like to imagine the ma i like to get the feel for the master shape uh, which we can call the silhouette if we like so that's the first thing i'm doing i'm getting a feel for the master shape now if i look here i can draw a straight line coming in here and in that straight line i can put a triangle and now I'm going to fill this triangle in a certain way, right? So I'm going to have a line like this and a line like this, a line like this, a line coming out here like this, right? One here, and this is going to all go here like this. So this is, I'm not, as you all know, I may not really stick to what I've got here, but just by doing this i'm training my hand and my eyes and my subconscious mind you all know i'm about the subconscious mind right so i'm training that to well i can't train my subconscious mind to do anything it, it already knows but i'm i'm re-familiarizing my subconscious mind to see things 
in a more effective manner rather than looking at the details inside so the outside the master shape so uh, because as you're all learning online you learn about all these structure things you know you learn about all things like you know how you're going to put a face in here and how the mouth is going to sit here and the jaw is going to sit off here and you get carried away with the, with this methodology uh we all do you know uh where all these kind of things kind of sit inside uh, and we that it, it creates imbalances because you're focusing on the in intricate details before thinking about what you're seeing so this kind of drawing is a little bit different to drawing from your imagination or or isolation training what do you want to think of it is this is what i call a total body workout when we do drawing we're not like trying to isolate a specific muscle group or anything so now i'm going to look in here for a shape and and like the shape that it exists in here is almost like a fish kind of shape like like a if you can call that like that kind of thing and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of find, trying to find a sort of center line in there. Oops, I missed something here, right leg. Like, and I'm going to now think about the division line in the middle, like this. And I'm going to come around the side. Now again, I might be way off because I'm not focusing on those little intricacies. But I like to do this because... Every time I do it, I'll get closer and closer to seeing things this way. And my subconscious will start remember to see things this way, right? Be which is actually, for me, a lot more effective than building it from the inside out. You know, you know, inside out is a great way to do things. But sometimes you lose the overall appeal. So it's good to reverse engineer sometimes. So you do things from the outside in and okay, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. You see, it should just be one big shape like that, right? See, old habits die hard. It's not a bad habit, but as I said, if you're familiar with seeing things both ways, then you just become infinitely stronger because you're, you're all the time switching between the two. Oh no, I've not focused my attention on this bit. I've not focused my attention on that bit. So now I'll go back to this bit. So I'm going to do one from the outside in. And then I'm going to go again and do it from the inside out. And we're going to get there a lot quicker, which is, you know, you think maybe not because you're having to do it a couple of times. But actually, you do get there a lot quicker. Right. So we have this kind of shape, which is like this. Right. I'm going to come in like that. So that's the kind of shapes that I'm looking at at the moment. Now, if I see I've got this neck which comes off from the what I have the center division line here, but her jaw and her chin come out here like this. And then I'm going to kind of do this, and we're going to find where her shoulder is, and her other bit of hair is going to come somewhat like this. Just make this a tiny bit smaller. It doesn't have to fit in the, um, in the frame, but I, I want it to. Now I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to look at some of the intricacies of the hairstyle so I, I'm going to divide this one actually this one will come out here like this and this one will come in like this and then so I'm creating shapes now on the inside and this is helping me find the patterns right see how straightforward it is so now we're going to go and think about all of this that's happening here now if i look at this shape here that we've created right now halfway along this shape or i would say two-thirds of the way along this shape we've got a cheek bone line of her zygomatic and then then we know that that's got to add up on the other side right so that's how the cheek cheekbones work they've got to add up on the other side and this is kind of like where her mouth is going to kind of be, right? And it's not necessarily going to be 100% correct, okay? But I'm going to kind of put her mouth shape in there like that. Just as like roughs, like a square, whatever. Not worrying too much about it, right? So then up in line with her, where her cheek, cheek line ends actually. It actually ends about there. We're going to have her nose 
portion which is just going to sit a little bit off to the side there like that right then we're going to come in like this we're going to come out now you see where this indentation is this is perfect for me to find where her eye line sits like that and she will have one eye here right and we're going to put a little bit of a a lacrimal bone from the inner eye socket which is all the way to the side uh, because her eye socket would actually be like that um, and then the other eye is going to sit in there right and then similarly around here on top because the eye socket we, if we know about anatomy is going to be here and this is a little bit higher we're just going to come in like this right so there we kind of have our basic facial structure from the outside in right from the outside in so let me just stick check if i've kind of placed these in a nice way let me flip that yeah that seems to all look all right so now i'm gonna start having fun i'm gonna work from the inside out because i've sort of made my little map right so i'm gonna start drawing this character in a little bit more detail right so we're gonna have the eye shape now i like to be a little slower with my eyes right so we're gonna have a straight line like this and we're gonna have a kind of shape like a comet it's like a hadouken fireball right it's just gonna go like that like this and then we have the upper eye lash just gonna come in like this and i'm gonna go like this right now this isn't the way that I would draw my own character designs or anything like that, as you know. I would use a little bit more structure and construction, but not too much, okay? But this, when I make studies or references of things, um, I like to do the drawing in a different way um, because I'm not drawing from my imagination. I'm not working out um, how things, uh, how it's going to be, because it's all been worked out for me. So this is an opportunity for me to train my hand-eye coordination um, uh, and my line placement, my my ability to choose my lines to choose my shapes to build uh, and that ability to do that well comes from building confidence now all confidence is a lot of people don't understand confidence and that's why they think they define themselves as lacking in confidence or unable able to grasp it because i don't believe they really know what it is in its truest most purest form confidence is simply the successful accumulation of brain cells regarding a specific activity that is being done so if you build those brain cells by repeatedly doing something basically you are building experience in a process so every time i do this for example i'm building experience in a process of familiarization of line placement definite decisive line placement to successfully establish my line in an accurate manner right so every time I do this I get that opportunity so it would be pretty much of a wasted opportunity for me to approach these drawings in the sense of I am going to um, 
try to draw a sphere for the head and divide that sphere and try to work out the construction and all that you know it's okay to do that sometimes but for the most part it's probably better to develop hand-eye coordination and line placement so there we are that's the face of the character laid down now I'm gonna have to pull and play to get these things into a right manner so I don't want to create a line like this for example I want to go with the skull I want to create that rounded feel of what she has which is what I've been trying to explain to the adorable Kitcha cat about contouring line so again we're gonna get this one coming around here like this and just in so we want to get this right so I'll kiss the line a few times there to get that correct right so again here now this is it I need to think about what happens now we got a zygomatic cheekbone here and the jaw is gonna come like this right so I have to soften that as I make these so so as I'm doing this right and because this character is based on a more how shall we say naturalistic human proportion anatomy we want to be very very true and accurate to that so again this will be an orbicularis oris muscle circling here and sometimes that creates a sag hair with a chin now if I look at this drawing we have that we have the sag hair and we have the chin which comes down which is the jaw the hard uh, mental portion of the jawbone now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna rotate this way and then we're gonna bring this we're gonna soften it just round up like that so you see we get the placement of the character's face pretty much looking as it should be now I want to think about the cheekbone okay so if the cheekbone is up here then you see how I'm slowly moving away from what I have in the rough but it's there to guide me but it's not I'm not religiously sticking to it because now I'm working more accurately from the inside right so now we have uh, this uh, winged portion of her head so I'm gonna start with a line like this and I'm just gonna turn it this way I'm gonna continue with it going up and I shouldn't really be fussing about the cleanup line because this is no way a cleanup line but I feel in that mood today I feel like we're just drawing a character's face it's pretty simple so let's you know while the line art is not spectacular what I'm doing it's quick let's make it a little bit tidy shall we say a little bit definite you know as opposed to um, all the time scratching I like to vary uh, what we do right so here now I don't really see how far in this goes because the camera's kind of cut off on this drawing so I'm just gonna bring this in like this and this is gonna come out and down in there like that so there we go that's that side it doesn't matter about the name of the method uh, Hung Ming Hui it just matters about the method okay I might know the name in English but what would the name be in Vietnamese you know um, don't care about the name um, just I call it side of the pencil okay now I'm being silly here I'm, I'm focusing too much on on trying to get this line nice and I don't want to bother now one thing that's happening here right is this is coming this is contouring down but it's coming in and around like this right 
So I'm going to do the same thing on all of these. So this is coming out in and then down, right? This one comes out in and down, and this one comes around. Now, where does that stop? See, I was using my own. I wasn't looking. It stops about there, right? So that's that side. Now we're going to have the rounded portion of this. So this is very, very round. You see, I've got it like this, which is my tendency, but this actually comes, it's very, very rounded like this. Now I'm going to rotate my disc just a little bit and it comes out here like this and off to the side like that. Oopsie, why did I undo that? I pressed the wrong button. Redo. Right. Okay. And then in here we have, which I missed, a round shape in here, which I will just rush like that. Right. Could be nicer, but that'll do. Now we need to think about the hair. Now the hair, all right, is tied up in a high pony. So it is kind of like hair like this so i'm gonna curl it in and around see in and around to give that feel of the high ponytail right which comes around here like this and it's divided in the middle so we have one in the big big one coming in the middle like this right which come in and down and then this line comes here like this and then there's another one coming in and down which i'm being very very kind of i'm just kind of like rushing this now but i want to get this arrow coming in here and then this one is going to go straight like that right and the same way we're going to go around and that's what makes this so much fun for me um is it's a game really like I, I make a rough scribble and then i try i just like to accurately be as accurate as i can to get the other things on top so now we have to think about this uh these things so there's a slight tilt with her head so this what i have up here is actually going to be around here like this right and it disappears behind her jaw and then it reappears, this area reappears behind her cheekbone like this, right? In fact, it's very thin. It's a lot thinner than what I did there. And then it starts to come up. So this is kind of weird, like this is imbalanced. It works as a drawing, but then when you look at it, you realize there's some imbalance there. So the first one is going to go all the way to the edge of her face like that and then we're gonna bring it in like this and then the inside portion comes here like this actually to this line here like that now the rest of this doesn't really add up but, <laughs> but we're gonna do it so how many there's one two so um there's gonna be one which goes to the middle Okay, so that goes to the middle. See, so I'm measuring it from here. So this is the middle of this area here. That's what I'm talking about. Then the other one is going to go just above the eyebrow. So that goes just above the eyebrow. And the other one comes to the middle here. And this one just comes around there like that. So there we go. That is the Shira face um, now the rest of it is quite easy well it all was quite easy to be honest with you uh, but we missed the neck uh, so the neck is just simply gonna come in here like this and then we have this nice under pattern of the hair which comes actually it comes more out like this but let's get the shoulder of the character in first okay so I'm just going to check something here. This still lines up, which is all good. That's what I was checking. So let's get the shoulder coming down like that. And let's 
have this coming in and the shoulder will go around let me just rotate my disc here like this so the shoulder will go around like that be a little bit more careless with the line and then the uh, back of the shirt or whatever will come here like that now the rest of this is pretty straightforward so let's just start building the hair from the outside in again because it really doesn't matter right so we're now going to create this line okay which should really add up to this okay that's it that's the line that we want to add up to that All right then we're going to create this line which joins nicely to this then coming off from here we're gonna have another line coming up there like that now we want to worry about the hair coming over and around the shoulders which is going to be this portion here and this is just going to continue here now what i love about these hair designs is the way they simplify it so we're going to have this is going to come around like this okay right we're just going to join those two so let's do it the easy way the strokes right so now what i absolutely love about this is they're going to really just use the contour of this to show how the hair is kind of folding you know so we have it coming from down here it's going to go up and this way right and then i'm what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to draw it from here and we really want to get the roundness and the directional change going right and well we could I don't want to be completely clean because it's not but let's just try to keep it a little bit tidy you know and we'll join that line to that line like that there we go so that's that then we've got this pony from the back coming from we're going to start from here and it's going to come down right and all of this inside is still hair but this is not hair right but then we're gonna we're gonna create that unifying line. It's gonna come this way, like this, right? So we have that. And then this is simply just divided into two. So then, as we divide it into two, it's gonna fort off on the side. So we're just gonna create this line here, like this, forking off on the side and then this one is as it forks off from that side it's going to go down onto that side and then we are just going to embellish this by adding another one in there like that and we get all of the uh different aspects so there you go that is the princess of power let's just check Flip selected scenes. Yep, it all works in inverse. Edit, undo. So that is the... Um... Okay, if you're a newbie, then I'll tell you from the start that the program doesn't matter. What did you watch me do? What did you watch me do throughout the whole process? Okay? So the whole process, you watch me just do one thing. Draw lines. Okay? Maybe I erased a few lines. Okay? Maybe I simply pressed undo once or twice, which is just like erasing the line, right? Which every program has. So as a newbie, please focus on what is being done instead of what is being used, okay? It doesn't matter whether you're a newbie. When you want to take a shit, you'll go to any basin, you'll sit down on there, and you'll shit out all the crap, right? It doesn't matter what this is, right? so let's not care about that it's simply a utensil it really doesn't matter you're what makes it special okay you're the special thing you're the artist unless you want to be a technician and then concern yourself with the software and how it was programmed and what code did they use to make it or this and that if you're an artist if you're a real animator 
then you should concern yourself with the things that make you good at that. So that's my advice to anybody, especially somebody calling themselves, defining themselves as a newbie. So that's actually really helping you to nip it in the bud so you don't waste precious time focusing on the toilet basin, which will just cause more and more shit to go into it. Right, okay, let me now go, go on to the uh, chat and I will, um, I will, before we go having a look at um, uh, people's work in the global Facebook community and suggesting how you can advance towards your dreams, ambitions, your destiny of being real animators uh, with the work that you've posted in there. I'm just gonna engage with the chat, see what you're saying. If there's one or two questions, we'll take those and then we'll go help people some more. All right. Um, Right, um, Animator Alex, how are you? Um, I'm still working on the spine. I also have the same problem with poses being stiff. I think doing some posture sketches will help. Poses will be stiff for a long time. Poses will be stiff for a long time until you have it ingrained in your subconscious mind of the things that you're doing of how the body works you have your own body you take it for granted every day but do you really understand how the body works you know what i used to do when i used to work out for example i used to work out for hours now i can get the same results in 15 minutes than a 45, what I used to get in a 45 minute workout, simply because I know how to concentrate on certain muscles and focus on them a lot more than, like I can stretch, for example, for an hour and as an ignorant person, or I can just do a like five minute mobility routine in the morning and I will be more flexible and more dynamic with my legs than I would be with the hour of ignorance of just stretching and not understanding so the stiff poses don't worry about them just focus on what you're doing focus on uh building those brain cells uh, those cells of recognition in your mind the experience cells whatever you want to call them of uh doing that particular uh task of understanding the way the body moves understanding the muscles understanding for example if i'm going to do the shoulder uh, and the latissimus dorsi, understanding just that muscle group, understanding the upper deltoid and the chest, understanding those things, understanding the scapula bone, how it moves, how it rotates, that will take the stiffness out of your poses so you don't just have a character just kind of like posed because you've gone to an art shop and bought one of those stupid dummies and you're posing the dummy and using that. A dummy is guiding you. What do you think your result is going to look like? Whether it's a dummy that looks like a stupid wooden stick man or whether it's an intricate anime dummy, if you don't understand the bone structure underneath that's making that dummy, that's making the dummy, whether that makes something look more alive and you don't understand the muscle deformations, then there will always be a stiffness. So you're doing the right thing, sir, by understanding the bone structure first because the muscles go on top of the bones so if you want to be what i call a real animator a real artist you will not allow the impatience the frustration to inhibit your progress your development your growth uh and you will focus on what matters rather as i said winners focus on the results losers focus on pleasing methods that's all there is to it um, I'm surprised there's still original cells from Shira available. Awesome, Magpie. Well, I animated on 12, but I don't know how to make it without it being too fast. Well, start getting used to working on 24 because 12 is your comfort zone and 12 is the wrong way. I don't care who else tells you, okay, there's no right or wrong. This is art. I just say, okay, be happy with your shit, right? I'm telling you this is the wrong way to do things work on 24 frames per second, reaccustom your mind to being able to see things at that frame rate and to understand what exposing twice, twos means you 
you have the duration in this day you you just extend the duration of the frame and the other day you would shoot the frame two times so the same frame is exposed twice nowadays you do things in a in a timeline duration of the image or the cell just have that for two have that for four have that for three have that for six eight twelve if you want to that's how you utilize that thing so 12 fps is just basically double exposing but get cutting the process down from the double exposure but then that limits you terribly because you want to have the flexibility to change your frame rate between 12 and 24. sometimes if you understand see timing the law of timing the fundamental law of laws everything has to move to a timing which is the law of timing and the 12 laws of animation is understanding the second now you have all these extensions beyond like 30 frames per second 60 frames per seconds all these tech geeks all obsessing with that nonsense that shit the greatest animation ever done and when these laws were defined was when it was 24 frames per second and it is the easiest way you can still look at stuff at 24 frames per second hand drawn stuff and it is amazing it blows away all of the rubbish that you know when, when you're when you're done being a tech head when you're done looking at the dirt that's been polished and you actually look at it for what it is you'll see that the hand-drawn animation stuff done by the disney studios in the 1930s onwards to say about the 1970s is absolutely stunning and that stuff was done at 24 frames per second and it's a very easy way to break that up you simply go uh, six frames is a quarter of a second 12 frames is half a second um, 18 frames is then three quarters of a second and then you got 24 which is one second so when you start to think in terms of that and you're animating in uh in terms of that like th this section I'll, I'll i'll have for like half a second that section i'll have for one and a half seconds or this section will be a quarter of a second three quarters of a second and you start thinking like in those terms once again it's not going to come it's like the stiff posing or whatever it's not going to come to you just like that you've got to build those brain cells you've got to familiarize yourselves with the things that matters in order for it to flow just like it is flowing all from my mouth because it's just so easy for me because i've built those brain cells so you've got to get out of your comfort zone and get into the learning zone and build those brain cells in order to do it so turn off the 24 to 12 frames per second and start working on 24 frames per second absolute must um bum, bum, bum. i'm just slightly lost because i looked it up as the overhand again hang ming he don't don't focus on the method okay don't focus on the method i suggested you to hold the pencil like this sometimes you hold it like this simply when you see me do these drawings digitally okay i'm mimicking what i do on paper right i make a shape on paper now i can't I can't sh show you because my camera doesn't work that way, but I'll quickly do something right now. Right? I hold the pencil like this, right? I hold the pencil like this, and I make a rough shape of what I want, right? So let me just make this rough shape of what I want, right? Right, so I just bear with me. Right, I know it's frustrating. You can't see what I'm doing. Right, right. So I made this shape. Right, I just hold the pencil like this. That's all it is. Don't care about what method it's got. It's just the same as I use that yellow line to make a rough shape. I'm not committing. I'm making suggestions. Right. Like that's all I do. Like and now I suggest the eyes like that. Right? Very rough. I can erase it and it will erase completely from my mind. Okay. Let's do a drawing of my daughter. She's always moaning. I'm drawing her mo mother all the time. Okay. Right. So let's. Not that it's going to look much like her because it's got her mother's hairstyle. Right. So now. I put some eyes in there as a suggestion. I can still rub it down whenever I want to. Now I'm going to change my grip. I'm going to change my grip. Right? So I start being a little bit light. I still light. Okay? But not. It's like I've got more control this way. Right? So if I want to start 
making some commitment with the eyes you'll see it in a minute right won't take long just bear with me let's just put those lips in all right all right she's got an indentation on her bottom lip right right there so now i've got some something more committed because i changed my grip like this right so i do a little bit more like this so let's let's give her ear even though i'm going to put the hair over the ear my daughter with my wife's hairstyle there we go right. so now we have this right. so now I have something right I can then go like this let's put a bow in her hair where will the bow will it will it will I put the bow on this side yeah let's so now I just rough a bow like that just give myself an idea okay maybe it's a bit big right let's bring it in a bit holding the pencil like this so now I can start to change my grip to play some right I think I've gone far enough but you can see um, this kind of thing is all it is don't read about the method there's no secret it's just control less control more control what frame of mind am i in i'm in a frame of mind where i see something in my head i'm gonna lay it down ah there it is that's exactly ah, it's not quite what i see i'm gonna stay in this frame of mind maybe this frame of mind okay now I, i'm starting to see it so i'll put this on top now i'm in this frame of mind ah yeah yeah that, that that's it okay now we're gonna kick ass now we change the grip we get control we draw and there it is baby okay so it's what you see me do in software it's exactly the same but i don't go and hold this thing and work with this thing the same way so i simply just draw in a lighter color or i change it to a lighter color if you don't have that ability then just draw in another layer change the layers opacity then go over it it's the same thing that's all there is to it don't make a mountain out of a molehill um i'm here learning tips on envisioning 3d load rotation well if you understand the form of something then you will understand how it rotates look this is a this is like a it, it could be like a triangle like just this okay now it's more like a, a square so a triangle turns into there's still that triangle on the top but it's more a square shape it's a triangle shape or it's a rectangle now it's a big rectangle a fat rectangle and a thin rectangle so it's just shape shape mastery um mm -mm -mm. I'd like to learn animation but first I want to learn how to draw well then learn how to draw first it's a different skill entirely and then you'll have to learn that that the, depending on how you learn how to draw it you can either help your animation or hinder it because drawing for animation is is a different skill entirely to drawing and doing digital painting which is more uh like i call magic illusion because you're not depending on the strength of your lines and you're using more uh, smoke and mirrors with colors and contrast and lighting so uh, be very mindful how you learn to draw uh, if what is the end goal um, i could definitely tell the difference okay uh, bum, 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 bum. 
Now I'm going to get through here. Just coming to the end of the first batch of chat. Um, can you explain the difference between animating on ones and twos? Animating on ones and twos is more or less the same thing. It's just understanding the timing. Animating on twos, you see, an ignoramus will tell you that ones will make it fluid and twos will be less fluid. No. Okay. Are you doing a quick movement? Or are you doing a slow movement? Um, are you... What is the time frame for the work that you have to do? You could put everything on ones, but it may be superfluous. Okay. So if I'm going to be doing a slow settle like this, and then suddenly I'm going to get my finger up like that. I could do the slow bit, the slowing in and slowing out on twos, and the movement I could do on ones, because it's quicker. Some people would do this on twos, and they put what you'd call smear or motion blur or multiple. If you're into that shit, fine. Me, I prefer to have the the action, the arc. Okay. The more and more we live in HD times, the less and less we want to mimic the 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 camera issues of previous years which is what motion blurs and smears are some people think there's an art to it as i said i i, I liken smears to the smears that you get when you're trying to stop your shit and you stain your underwear and they call them skid marks so i don't want to dirty my animation with skid marks so i like to understand the animation and the mechanism of the arc and sometimes switch between twos and ones ones will ones will uh give you speed twos will give you weight okay so if I'm going to throw a punch, right, if I'm going to have a little staccato movement, see how I did that, right, I'd do this all on ones, right, because it's quick, it's random, and then I'll, then I'll just boil on twos like this, where you see the circular motion, and then I'll recoil on twos, and then I'll have the strike on ones, so all this will be ones, this will be twos, and this will be one, okay, so it's understanding that twos and ones, can you can interchange between weight and swift lightness with ones and weight with twos. Sometimes you're not able to see certain things that's so fast, like a jitter. You're going to want to put that on ones to really give it life. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Do you have any recommendations for tips on 3D camera movements in 2D animation? Yes. Make sure that you learn how to draw and animate well enough to, to sell the illusion that your 2D character is, has, got, has got three dimensions. Um, here's the thing. Okay. You can do this test yourself. You can get your phone and you can circle it around like a piece of live action something and you can put that piece of you can now you have the technology to create a roger rabbit a space jam in your own house you can take that footage into your software there are many softwares that can do it whether it's premiere even photoshop i even did it with photoshop once okay and you can start to draw your animation in that live action camera move you don't need a computer 3d software and if you can pull off the illusion that your character is existing in that world and you have the skill and understanding then you can go about thinking about doing that if you can't then it's just a pipe dream like how do can you give me any tips on making millions of dollars or millions of whatever yeah well what, what do you what, what do you know about money to do that or what do you whatever you're just gonna dream you know so the thing is is like get, at least acquire my big tip to you is acquire some of the ability first before comprehending doing this so if you feel you have that ability then it shouldn't be a question it's like okay well i can move my character in 3d space so it doesn't matter whether you know whatever i want to do with the camera i can do it's not a problem um is it better to do frame by frame or or going throughout the animation. I don't understand. There is only one way to animate for me, and that's uh, 
frame by frame. Everything else is digital puppetry. I don't call it animation. I call it digital puppetry. Um, Michael Elliott, I think you produce great work as well. I've been watching a lot of Hanna-Barbera recently. Um, some Roadrunner as well. It made me realize that TV animation genuinely has no excuse. Absolutely not. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, we're going to be going and looking at people's work very soon. We'll come to the end of the chat. I'm just having a look. So it's just Wild West territory. I do what I please with the pencil. Absolutely. You're the artist. You on you just simply as if 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 it works, if you get your result that way, then that's the way you do it. You know, um, Bruce Lee used to say when somebody was talking about the technique of his sidekick, because a lot of people, if you look at him compared to some other people, his kicks are not pretty. They don't load the leg fully. They don't have that finesse. They have the speed and the raw power, but they don't have the finesse. He used to say, what does it matter when you're on the floor? How, how I loaded my sidekick. My sidekick destroyed you. What does it matter whether I loaded it this way or loaded it that way? You know, so it's what works. But do not let that mentality stop you from learning the fundamentals. Because the fundamentals are what works is always based on the fundamentals okay um, this newfound freedom is empowering animating on 12 is like coming to a battle <laughs> okay um, okay well don't anim animes animate on eight frames to save frame and time well here's the thing if you want to save time then just don't bother you know they have to save time because they don't have the budget. They don't have the money. Nobody cares. Like, but like, here's what, see what that R stands for in the background. It doesn't just stand for real. It stands for results. One of the reasons I do these live streams is, is I'm, I'm about restoring the quality to hand-drawn animation. I'm, 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 this whole thing is called real animator training. It's, it's about helping people, empowering people to be what I call real animators. A real animator is about putting out the best possible quality uh, through the medium that they can, not depending on half ass methods, not trying to save time. Most of the time people are wasting trying to save time rather than trying to express their art. And that's why their work looks fucking shit. Because they're, they're actually wasting time trying to save time. And they don't learn the things that matter. They don't learn the anatomy. They don't learn the laws of animation. They don't learn all of these things that matter because they're trying to get caught up in the tools of the, of, of the current set of tools that everybody's using. Um, and, and they want to focus on that. And that's why they never get anywhere when it comes to quality and their stomach hurts and they feel like shit inside when they look at their work but just put two and two together what did you where did your energy go what did you focus on you didn't focus on animation son you didn't focus on quality you focused on saving time you focused on cutting corners when you never had the skill in the first place so what do you expect shit simple as you know, it's not rocket science. So why don't we go back, learn the things that matter, focus on the things that make things good, because it's not you at fault. It's the, it's the thought process and the, where the expansion of your energy is going that's at fault. Okay? So focus on the things that matter. Focus on keeping it real. Focus on the art rather than the tool. Don't be a tool of a tool. And then you'll start to feel happy about what you're doing. You start to feel good about yourself. And you'll start to realize just how easy it is to be a badass. Right. Um, ba -ba 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 Did animators practice how to stroke the line in traditional animation? Um... So, Jong An, these methods I tell you aren't necessarily the ways everybody does it, okay? 
many people learn on the job by doing cleanup, right? By stroking the line. But when I'm suggesting these things to you, like you stroke the line and do this and that, because I, because obviously you're not in the industry, you're not learning on the job. So I'm trying to tell you ways that you can think about, okay, you're just following, like you're going through a line textbook and you're just stroking lines, or you're going around a circle, you're just stroking lines. You're cleaning those things up. So I'm just trying to train your subconscious to understand how to draw a clean line. A lot of these people in the industry did not do that. They were basically applied to be animators. They didn't become animators. They got jobs as cleanup people or whatever. And then they learned on the job by stroking the lines and then going around the shape, turning the animation disc. That's all it is. So when I give these suggestions to you, it's not necessarily that they're doing the things that I'm telling you to do because everybody's put into a different set of circumstances in order for them to grow at that level. So I'm trying to think, hmm, well, these people don't have this knowledge. These people have been learning to draw on their own. They don't understand about cleanup, the way we weight the line, the way we draw and clean up. They, they, they just know what they know from what they've been teaching themselves and what people on YouTube who have had no animation experience from the golden traditional hand-drawn paper days don't understand how to draw good lines. They use these software curves and different brush tools with all these stupid things like I save my time I just draw the line as is and I get it done beautifully people are always talking about my line art in my sketch pads or whatever it's just like it's it's done from just repeatedly stroking the line so so I'm thinking well how am I gonna get this across to somebody who's never understood that and who won't hasn't got that opportunity to clean up an animator's work and doesn't know how. Why don't you open a textbook and you just start going along the line? Or why don't you start going around some geometric shapes? Because I'm just trying to teach you how to stroke, clean, stroke, vary your line, put weight to the line in an environment that you can do at home very cheaply. Um, okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Well, one guy has a whole video on the fundamentals of animation. You think you're going to learn from his video? One video on the fundamentals of animation? Good luck. Uh, not all animators necessarily take months to stroke proper line, I mean, but some of them does. Um, I think I read or heard they did it to save time and frames. Okay, right. We're going on all these um, hearsay. So now we're going to switch it up. We're one hour in. We're going to start looking at people's work and we're going to start helping people move forward towards their destiny, to their ambitions, their goals, the accomplishment of their ambitions, their goals, to be real animators. So in the Facebook global community. So I am going to get rid of my face. My mic is on. We're going to bring in the global Facebook community group and we're going to start looking at some of the posts. So Daniel Angel, one who is a real animator training library member, has uh, consolidated his uh, test with this. Based on the advice from last night's live stream, I plan on going back to edit the legs on my run cycle. This version has not been edited yet, but I have plotted my arcs on the right leg hip and knee and ankle for analysis i can kind of see where i went wrong based on the fact that my arcs aren't very fluid after i finish the remaining exercises in the basics library i'm going to return to this and make corrections it didn't take long to plot the art but it's it is overly tedious to do is it something or does it mean i should try to learn how to arc my keys intuitively if not the question is how do i use this information to help me going forward well the information is, is your arcs are wrong, Daniel, and you've seen just how far off your arcs are. So this is not, you You don't care how tedious it is. Let me show you something. Okay, okay. let, let me, me go, go back, back to this example. Everybody cries and moans. Well, not everybody. Oh, uh, well, and then they make fun of people who are in the gym. To me, this is the most tedious thing in the world, which is why I don't have big arms. I like to use my body weight. But like, here's the thing. Right? It's boring, it's tedious, but you gotta keep doing it if you want big arms. That's the only way 
right? You can you can vary. You can hang from a chin up bar, but you're doing the same thing. You're just working this muscle, right? So the fact of the matter is, Daniel, that this particular thing you've done is absolute gold right here because you can exactly see you and it, the good thing is is you're training yourself you're not getting it from me or anyone well you're getting the exercises from me from the training library but as you're going back and looking at these arcs you're telling yourself exactly what you did wrong there's nothing better than that because now you have the answer you don't need me to say it to you when you post it in this group. You don't even need me to say, well, this is because if you do this and you see a flaw, you're like, ah, well, that's not very good, is it? I'd better fix that. So that's how to move forward. This is exactly, this is brilliant. I haven't even looked at your video yet, but just this thumbnail, I'm like, wow, look at those arcs. They're off. Let's have a look. Yeah. We want them we want them to be more you know more arc like and less triangular, you know? So that's you can exactly see why you're why you're losing form and volume in your legs. You know, you want it to be more like this, right? Not like this. And that's why your legs are gaining volume and losing volume. And this is one of the problems that people fail to understand is the volume loss is due to the bad arc. So this is, this has only got two likes, but if I could give this a hundred loves, Daniel, I would. This is fantastic. You won't have to do this all the time, but it's a good way to start. Like you get used to the habit of doing this and then you'll start just seeing the arcs and you won't have to go back and revise them, right? It'll become second nature to you. Excellent. Alex, here are my cervical spine studies. I've only watched through the lecture a couple of times. I feel like I've generally solid understanding of moving the mechanics in the cervical part. Not sure if I should give this part a little uh, as little time as I could being naive but I'm just gonna move on to the lumbar yeah just keep moving make your studies and keep moving uh, Alex um, okay so you're learning about the atlas in the you know the the pivoting of those two bones I'm just gonna watch this um, to see if you've understood that okay yeah See, yeah, that's good. That's good. Because as long as you've understood that it's that atlas bone, um, this this bone under the occipital portion of the skull and the s second vertebrae that have the most movement, which allow you to pivot your head back and forward, and all these ones are just kind of complementary, okay, then, you know, then you're good. So, yeah, as long as you've grasped that, you're good. Now let's have a look at your back. Come on now. Okay. Now let's have a look at that top bone. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, this side is better than the other side is a little too much. But this side is better. But it's good as long as you're getting that, you know... As long as you're understanding that that's where the movement occurs. Um, good. Good. Okay, Logan V. Mitchell. I haven't seen much of the man Logan for a while. Um, well, I won't give you critiques, Logan, but I'll give you, um, I'll give you uh, my opinion and suggestion. Uh, your Silver Surfer test. Okay. You've worked hard, Logan, by timing it and all that. But what, what the problem is, is your composition doesn't really allow us to see much about the Silver Surfer. And also your choices of poses doesn't really allow much. Now, you messaged me some time ago about how looking at reference and 
and, and this and that. And you're right, you should look at reference. And maybe you did look at reference of a snowboarder or something. But you see, the problem with that is, is when you're when you're early on in the stage like you are, um, this reference is it isn't really helping us in any way because we we look at it and we don't really feel anything. We just see like, oh well, uh, it doesn't even really feel like the guy is going in in any danger or anything and. Only when I slow it down do I see that he's pivoting past this thing here. So you've attempted to time stuff and you are slowing in and and slow and speeding out and all that, which is good. So I can see that you're trying to incorporate things that you've learned. But let me just show you what I mean here very quickly by, you know, making things more interesting. Now, I'm not going to do this. Um, I'm not going to go overboard with this, but... So let me say that I've got a guy, right? So the guy is going to be coming in on his surfboard here. So I'm I'm going to I'm not really going to be thinking about his posing just yet, right? So let's say that I'm going to bring him into this pose. Now how am I going to get him and then there's going to be something moving towards him, right? Which is what what your kind of asteroid or whatever which is kind of huge is moving towards him right so the main thing that i'm going to think about is i want to bring him more and more into the screen here right so and i want to have him like really kind of hunched down i'll bring the board maybe maybe to the back maybe i'll push it even more like to, to really show the peril so this is this is like a like anticipation logan we're going one way more than the other way right so i i would need to look at a real surfer like the way you did because i don't know anything about it right but i'm just gonna put this this way like this right now this thing is slowly moving coming towards him as it's getting bigger right bum 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 right so then then we're gonna think about moving him around the other way now like speeding speeding the other way right so he's gonna you got him like speeding this way like here like this right so my arc is gonna go like this i'm not just simply gonna go like that i'm gonna really bring him in to enhance the danger right so now you're gonna got like this top view of him on the surfboard like that which i wouldn't really begin to know without looking at a real surfer right Right, so but you can you see now already I've got some something kind of happening there like this, right? And then this guy is this thing is now gonna be moving even more so in like this. Bum 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 let me turn off the onion skin like that, right? Now I would I maybe start you didn't really think of, you didn't really do a camera move you just had him go there like this but i would i would start thinking about like maybe playing with the camera like so i would then let me look at that arc is going to go this way so i would change the board arc here right and have him here like this and then this thing will be coming forward but then i'll be thinking about well Maybe I'll be wanting to to follow that silver surfer around this guy now. So have the camera moving with this big thing coming towards the screen. So we start going with the silver surfer with this thing still in front of us and the screen like this, right? So it's like bum, 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 right? And then we're going to go even more with the camera, right? So then let's let's level him up a bit. So first I will draw him where like where I think the arc is going to go. So let's let's have him straighten that board up but the board kind of reverse to this side. Yeah, that's good. So his knees will be like this. I'll draw it a little bit nicer for you like even though I don't really have the reference material. But uh, so his board is going to change this way and we're going to make him big even bigger right here like this. Just like bum bum bum. Bum, bum, right and then this thing is going to be like a huge wall that is going to be coming with us bum, 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 right and then finally we're going to have him kind of level up right 
it's going to kind of level up like this and its hands are going to come up I don't know anything about surfing but I'm just going to kind of just do whatever like this right and then I'm going to make him even bigger on the screen the camera is now with him and we are almost past what it is that we're passing um, like that and then we're gonna kind of have so that's gonna be out and then he's gonna start to get smaller and move away from us right so the back of his board is gonna come up like this his feet are gonna be there like that like this maybe the back of his arm is gonna be up his arms gonna be in like this ah, it'll make sense when I draw it in for you right um, just working stuff out yep so one more actually we'd need to zoom in so from here to here like what we would need to do is between here we need to get right close to the silver surfer right so his body will have to be like this right then he can so we can get this thing out so we're up close to him now and then he's gonna zoom away right? okay so in that case this is gonna be more down like this right and then he's gonna speed away like a little bullet like that right then one more right? level him up like just like that okay let's so um so let's have a look yeah thanks for the tip zentron but i'm just speeding through this i'm just shitting this out if i really wanted i would need to look at the reference so he's here we go around him and he comes through so i'm going to start drawing this in but before we do that we're going to um we're going to bring the surfer in how do we get him into this position right um because we're starting kind of mid arc right so I'm gonna put this frame I'm gonna add a frame because Shira is coming in we're gonna have him bum, bum, right so his head maybe is gonna be here like this maybe his hand is gonna be in just to bring him in there right so it's gonna be something like this right so on in between we've got something like this but I'm gonna quickly this is gonna be super fast because drawing anatomical figures is the easiest thing in the world to me so I'm gonna give myself about maximum 15 minutes we'll see how I do right so um, let me just yellow all this stuff in let me take care of this guy and then we'll think about the asteroid right so I'm not gonna look you know my surfer posing is gonna be a little bit all over you know inaccurate whatever um, we're just gonna show you how this works right bum 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 right right so let's work straight in black make this straightforward right so let's have the uh, trapezius of the character the back the latissimus dorsi like this the deltoid right the rear delts the upper the tricep tendon the lateral tricep okay the arm like this the hand okay coming in like this right he's just got a bold head so let's just do the occipital portion of the skull like this right so right so that's enough of that that's let's just heavy this slightly okay like this right so we have his head let's give him i don't know if he's got ears this is my own made up version of the silver man right it's silver sun it's not silver so this is kevin silver on his surfboard Kevin silver right right so we have this right so now we're gonna bring him in 
so let's just go with what we got all right so right let's have our okay pelvis okay so sacrum is going to be here right so we got the glute the other glute here right so the tensor fasciae latte right the gastrocnemius and the foot here like this right? then the other foot is going to be more this way right so the gastrocnemius is going to be here like this I'm going to turn that out just a little bit right so we got the butt there right? now we've got the trapezius right? the latissimus coming this way so there's a little bit of twist in his body now as he sees what's coming towards him let's keep the peril in his hands let's try and have some acting going on in here right so let's turn this arm a little bit this way like right, this right. so we got something like this now the upper traps right. and the head is going to be turned towards the peril what's coming towards him so we have something like this no right. and let's just have his whatever his board looks like I have no clue right so I'm not going to rub out the the yellow just yet right so now we're going to think about this okay so hips sacrum hips glutes tensor fasciae latte okay so quad comes up gastrocnemius right achilles tendon this is here so we really need to think about the pose to sell this right so the surfboard is this way now right so then the other foot is going to be out here like this right now we need to think about the muscles so we want the torque of the body to be turning right so the alex was asking about the spine rotation so the turn is in the head right and a little bit in the the spine but then the lumbar okay so then the latissimus is going to be turning this way right now we're going to kind of lower this hand onto the board would be lowering onto the board but then we're going to bring this hand up to create nice follow through right so we got that upper deltoid the scapula is here like this so that back muscle definition coming up here like this gonna open his hand out right have him low his head looking up at whatever he's coming out so logan we're really putting the anticipation into the character's pose here right so now he's gonna go this way right so he's gonna completely go this way so he's going up on himself so i've got a i'm gonna rotate this right i'm gonna visualize this drawing now right so i'm gonna visualize the anatomy from the pelvis going right so the pelvis will give me the the idea of what the legs is doing so the knee is here right so the rear leg is going to be on here like this right and the upper leg is going to be out like this so the board is off right so i'm going to take that board and i'm going to move it just out there in line with that right that's more like it right so now i'm going to think about the upper middle of the body so i'm building his rib cage right i don't really confuse about the pose i'm going to have his arms in because i'm not a surfer i don't understand so i'm just going to have his arms out and be they be wrong they be wrong okay we can always refer to this actually i'm going to have his head coming back and up away from itself like that 
I'm going to have this arm up and out as well, like that. So we have something like that. Good, right? So I will just tidy this up a little bit so we can see what I've done. Right? So I'm going to arch his head back just a little bit so we're going to see a little bit of his brow and his nose, right? And his cheekbones and his jaw, right? His parietal portion there like this, right? We see some of the trapezius muscle and the chest and the upper deltoids, right? Upper deltoid here, arm here like this. Stretch into that chest and move out into this. Right? So then we have the leg coming here. And this leg will be coming here like this. Again, I don't really know the size of the board in relation to this guy, so we're just going to do that. Right. right, so we see where we're going with this. Bum, bum, bum. Well, I can show Ren and Stimpy hasn't really got zany cartoon animation. It's got shit animation, but I can show you. Uh, we can study a wily e. coyote. All Ren and Stimpy is just one drawing and then snapping into another drawing, you know. Um, so I can show you. A, we can do a breakdown of a um, of a zany coyote or something like that, right? So, um, so now we're gonna think about the guys leveling up a bit so his back I'm going to do his pelvis hair right and his back coming like this right his upper arms I'm going to kind of keep this pose just kind of keep him as is don't want to move him too much right so his upper arms going to be there like this his head is going to be here like that right so that's his trapezius, his lats, okay, his this, right. See, I'm not being I'm not being mean by rubbishing Ren and Stimpy like that. You see, you got to understand why I'm online, right? I'm online because my agenda is to restore quality to hand-drawn animation. So a lot of you guys were born and are coming to this way before the quality left the building so I'm just like if you ask me a question about something I'm gonna tell you straight like no Ren and Stimpy is shit okay it is not good quality animation so we got this thing coming here like this you might like it that's a different matter I like McDonald's doesn't mean it's quality food right it's it's nice it tastes nice but like, so this thing's gonna come in here like this now like this right now we're gonna change his angle some we're gonna play with this I want to do more with this actually so I'm gonna have him from my own kind of imagination of when I have ever for the because it's just so uninteresting to me surfing okay my daughter loves it take her to the beach she stands and watches them so from my vivid imagination of no reference right I'm just gonna have him kind of holding on to this board right it's wrong i know if i'm really gonna animate this uh, properly and not just give a live stream chit chat right um i would uh, definitely research right so we're gonna have his kind of like this kind of pose right and the surfboard is gonna be we're gonna change that angle that angle is off okay so i actually want that surfboard angle to be more like this all right so I'm just gonna do something like that right now so we're gonna play with his legs again like this all right and his, and his other foot like this his back like this all right and his other arm could come down like that right so we can see where we're going with this and I will throw in a few breakdowns just to ease the timing the asteroid is going to be quite linear in its movement 
So now we're, we're back into safety zone, easy posing, so arm, okay, he's getting wiry now, he's getting more the kind of build that I like, rather than super muscular people, but, you know, just speeding through this, so latissimus, pelvis bone is here, abdominals is here, right, so this is coming here, the scapula is up here, the other scapula is going to be here. All right, so then this leg is going to be out. All right, so now we're kind of changing the angle up a bit. The foot is going to be here. The other foot is going to be here, like this. Right? Then his head is going to be here. All right, he's going to be looking, almost looking behind him some as he's going around the corner, but we won't really see much of his face so we just want a little bit of that twist a little bit of that occipital bone coming through there like this right then we're gonna have this arm what would this arm be there this arm would be we want it more dynamic yeah let's throw it out this way as if he's just taking it off the board let's put some drag in his wrist there like that there we go bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Now we go straight back into the rear. So easy entry level anatomy for this, right? So it's pelvis, sacrum, okay, glutes, right? Uh, shoulders, right? Rear delts up here like this, right? Just like that. Let's keep this arm bent now this way all right so a little bit of the head coming in here we don't really see it all right so this is tensor fascia latte okay biceps femoris right. gastrocnemius like this way gastro this is leg is going to be turned out just a little bit of the other way like this that will do let's bring him down just a little bit he's a little bit big a little bit big did i bring him up or down the right way got to hold the shift key when i do that okay there right so that's where he's coming in so let's just harden this portion okay like this All right there we go. That'll do. Bum, 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 bum. Then he's going to speed away from us. Um, hey, I'm Beers Winnerwall. I hope you and your family. I want to thank you for giving me, me my pleasure, Mr. Logan. Logan Bernard Mitchell. I love that name, Bernard. It has to be said. It just makes him more regal, more more loyal, royal, you know. So now this is going to be going this way out like this. So we look how I define his iliac crest hair and his sacrum. That's going to help me get the glutes in like that. Right. See this I'm going to come this way like this. I think this has been a, a pretty good, um, enjoyable little thing. That I'm not, I'm not done with it yet. We want to show you some breakdowns to weight this, right? Um, so now the latissimus connects to the arm, right? So important thing to understand that, right? Trapezius is here. Latissimus connects to the humerus bone, so that way we get that nice back muscle definition happening there right. the head will be down buried the scapula is here let's open this arm out right. this way like that i can lose that because we've lost the asteroid or whatever it is right and He's going to be super, super small here. So let's just go for silhouette. 
right? So let's just go for his position like this and have him relaxed, right? And then let's change his direction again on the last one. It's all about directional change, which makes it more interesting. So his legs are going to be like this. His arms are going to be here. Like that. Right. So. Um, let's now throw in some um so originally this is what it is right so we have we have the anticipation coming into the asteroid quicker and then it speeds away in the camera now let's pick our, our breakdowns to add some weight and timing to this so it doesn't just just doesn't just move like this and this is how this is how easy it is to animate that flashy anime stuff that you guys think is so great right um, nothing wrong with it as i said mcdonald's is great but you know um you just now wait wait the path there's paths of movement everywhere and now i pick where to wait my path okay so i'm gonna wait this one right so i'm gonna just bring my man into this pose like on two thirds of the way in right i'm gonna bring him in to this one right and i'm just gonna draw an outline of a guy because i don't have time i've i've, I've taken this as far as i really want to so i'm just gonna come in and draw you've all seen me kind of draw i can push it i'm just gonna draw the outline of the pose right so we got two thirds of the way in I'm going to weight it like this, right? And I'm going to weight it even more, right? So I'm going to go in right here and I'm going to favor this guy now. This is anime timing, right? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to really favor this particular bows here like this, right? So bum, 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 right? And go straight into that, right? Now we're going to zoom right out of this fellow right on one third this way right so there's going to be a directional change on the board like this here like this and his body is going to be like here like this so his leg is going to be up here like this like he's almost actually getting off rising off the board his arm is going to come down on itself like this, right? And the other arm is maybe going to be there like that. And the board direction is going to change like this, right? So we're waiting it, right? So at the moment, we have something like this. Boom, right? Boom, right? See how freaking easy this shit is. Sorry, Logan, it's not shit, but I'm just talking about the the whole moving camera anime whatever thing that all the kiddies think is better than Disney, right? Right, so now we got this, right, to move this way. And now we're going to go in. We're going to slow in around this area here, right? So I could do one here between here and here, but I don't want to. I'm going to more focus on slowing into this guy between here and here, right? So again, I'm now going to maybe uh, put a half onto this, right? So I, th I think about the direction of my board like this, right? And now I think about the pose that he's getting into, right? So he's getting into this pose like this, right? And then I'm going to up his body somewhat like this, right? And as I said, I'm not really a surfer, so I would need to understand. That looks like he's, he's getting ready to fap one out, so I'm going to change that pose, right? I'm going to have this like this, just have him coming in 
like this right not enough we're gonna do the the thing that anime people love which is the favor right so i'm gonna go from here right and i'm gonna come and favor this pose now right Bum, bum, bum. Right, so we're going to go around there like this. I'm going to favor this guy here, right? So we're just going to literally, I'm going to make a light thing here because this yellow is distracting me too much, right? So I've got an idea of where the asteroid is, right? So now I'm going to almost favor this pose right this is what what it's cheap and cheerful this kind of mentality of timing right it's really just clicking and chopping between um poses right it's above cutout because the cutout rig just would not be able to, to pull it off as well even though that's how they animate but the anime drawings are so nice with all the musculature and all the shading and all the clothing that it just looks great but it's kind of like it's kind of just cheating from one pose to the next really so we now we can really see the timing so he's here he comes in and he zooms we could really really now now before we come out we're gonna do another um another thing right ba -ba -bum. okay so between here and here right i'm gonna i'm gonna change his i'm gonna arch his back and i'm gonna have that board kind of go like this so i'm gonna really play with the favoring of this guy right so i'm gonna have again i'm gonna play with the favor okay because we're doing this pure anime timing, right? The timing of of the way they like to do things, right? So then, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna push it a little bit. So, um, oh, I didn't put his board in, right? So his board is gonna be here. So I'm gonna look how this looks. My pleasure, Logan. Well, that's what I'm here for, brother. Right, so this goes like this, right? Okay. In fact, I don't need to put the other one in there, but I'm gonna do it right. So it's he's here, he's here, and now he's here. like, you see, we're waiting it, right? So now here, I'm gonna really, really wait, wait the drawing again with more favors, okay? More favors because the hand is quicker than the eye. That's the way this whole Sakuga thing works, okay? So now, um, we're going to come in. I don't need the yellow here. So I'm going to create the illusion of fluidity now by putting a half. Okay. So I'm going to let me just rough this in and get rid of that because that's affecting how I see my spacing. Right. So I'm going to put my guy on a half here. Right. Right. So I'm going to put his leg maybe here, his other leg maybe gonna come here right his arm could come here like this right like that right, like this see i liken this kind of understanding of timing to a young guy who's just discovered porn right it's exciting it's fun and he keeps doing it but you know and that's why everything just moves and moves and moves and there's whizzing camera and people are fighting but that's really not you know it'll only it's only or that's why as i say the real deal the animators who really um know their craft they they like to work subtle uh, and it's not always about the fast action you know i'm not dissing it fast action is exciting it's good it's important to mix it up but I like to remind why I'm on this do this YouTube videos do this I'm here to restore quality into 2d animation because 
Right now, it's suffering a fate worse than death. It's under the guise of digital puppetry, and people are believing that that's the way to animate. We can't have that. We can't have that. Right, so this is going to go this way like this. Boom. Right, so... Um, He's like, see the illusion of fluidity. fluidity has come here, but now we're going to slow into this, right? I think it's important that I, I do this. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a bit more than I wanted to for Logan, but it's important that I do this because these streams become a bit samey if I keep looking at people's walk cycles and things and telling them like that. There's, there's nothing, you know, that I told them that's any different to what I told the person the, the last week, you know? Uh, so... It's, I think sometimes I like to take a break from from that and if we find a case study where I can really exemplify certain things then I can inspire you all um, when you study from the training library the video is perfect um, there's nothing really I can say that's better than that uh, because you can rewind that and that I'm not speeding through it like this I'm literally doing it in a step-by-step -step manner okay so sometimes if I'm gonna focus more on a post like this it's because I think actually it's good to break things up a bit and you can learn a bit more from these streams right so let me just bring this board this way like this boom see so now the illusion of fluidity is coming and I'm really gonna favor this because I really want to pull into this before I before he shoots away so he's here he's just like there now I really want to keep going here so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for you to understand this it's not even puppet animation it's digital puppetry let's let's be clear it's building a puppet and moving it around okay um, it's digital puppetry so I don't even call it puppet animation it's digital puppetry right so um, this is gonna come in now I'm gonna I'm gonna go straight to the favor here like this so this is just gonna speed things up we're gonna get that more sticky timing that's what I call that's I actually like it so I'm not ridiculing it some of that anime stuff that constantly likes to just save by going into the favor rather than slowing in on thirds and halves. It's got its own beautiful sticky kind of rhythm to it, like this kind of what I call sticky timing, like it's a staccato kind of feel. I really like that actually. It's got its own charm to it. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna embellish this. Um, boom. And now we're gonna have to do that pull away. So you see he's coming in, that gives the feeling of fluidity we could we could weight this in other areas but we could add more frames here right and then here before we come out but I'm going through this just quickly there's only so much I want to only so far I want to take this and hopefully you can see I haven't wasted time trying to build a puppet or whatever I just draw it and it's and it's done and it looks good and like the more then drawing you've seen how fast I drew the figure it's not gonna take long to draw it even nicer it'll take longer to build a shitty puppet and manipulate it and have it look like a piece of sliding shit so it's better to just draw it right so I'm gonna come out on thirds here so one third of the way but I'm gonna have his board. No, I'm not gonna have his board come. But I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, let's have his board come right up. Let's have his board come right up. Let's do something fun, right? So let's change this. Let's have his board. So his feet are gonna be here. His other foot is gonna be here, right? His back is here his head is here all right his other arm is up here notice how I just draw the guy correctly I don't try to have any stupid formula right because I know where the anatomy is very important okay I'm not saying that 
to talk about how much better I am. I'm saying that to inspire you to go away and learn the things that matter. And you do see this is the thoraculumbar fascia, the iliac crest, the glute. And come here like this. All right. And then we're going to have a surfboard. Okay, it's probably going to be a lot higher now. Like this. So we put in a new key here. Let's see what we get. Boom. All right, that's more exciting. Um, boom. Yeah, so we're going to see, even just by doing that, that works, but we're going to push it even more, right? I'm going to throw in a favor between this and this, right? So this whole staccato anime thing is just going to be like the way that we're going to do it, right? So um, let's do that. Let's create another key. Let's favor this drawing. So they're not even animating the, the, the intermediate arc, which is what I would actually like in fact let's just put a bit of disney in here let's change the arc let's have it arc this way rather than just it might spoil the whole thing oopsie this edit got drawing object edit um oh software is slowing me down edit paste drawing object right so let me get rid of this that's it yeah so See, the anime guy, let's stick with the anime. I wanted to kind of arc this in, but we would need to come up on thirds to show that arc. So let's just cheat it like the anime guy and just have it less of an arc, right? And let's just go straight into that. So more of an up here, more this. And I'm not really focusing too much on that, right? put the head here like this so yeah that's that's all I'm gonna have for that that'll work right mm -hmm. boom right so I don't even really have to spend too much time on the rest of this but I'm going to I'm going to put one between here and here so there's a big jump and then we we put a half between here and here right um, so let's put the half between here and here then we just then we just do the asteroid right which I'm gonna make very simple right so this actually let's not put it on halves let's put it on two-thirds of the way right so let's change it let's arc it this way right just like this there we go let's come out of it okay Let's have a little bit of the foot, a little bit of the back, a little bit of the head, a little bit of the hand. There, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Okay, that's enough of the surfer guy. Um, boom. Right, so he's here, he comes in, and he goes around and through. So he's like, He's in, he's around, and he's through. So now let's throw in the asteroid um, on this guy. And I'm going to use the asteroid like maybe like a cutout kind of thing because it's just going to save me time that way. So I'm going to have the asteroid in blue. And I'm just going to make it a big shape like this, Logan. No, I can't put it in cutout. I just can't, right? I'm just going to have it a big shape like this. Not like a, a nice shape what you did, Logan. Okay. Maybe we put another lump here and a lump here. Okay. And a lump here. I don't know. We just do that, right? Now, the next key for this right doesn't even look like an asteroid but it'll do right um, 
is I'm going to put this here because the next thing is, is it's going to move this way. So I need to think about the size of it in relation to the other one, right? So the size is just going to be getting bigger. So I focus on this shape, right? Like this. I change the angle somewhat. Right? So I was going to try and treat it like cut out, but nah. All right, let's just treat it like shapes. We get it done faster and better this way, right? We we bummed out on the actual shape. So there we go. And then we're going to put a, a shape in there like that, right? So that'll do, right? So what I'll do is I'll erase that one now, right? So then the next frame of this guy was this one here. So I'm going to put him here so I can refer to this. So it's rotating this way. So it's rotating this way. So I'm going to keep it rotating that way. Right. So let's have it continuing its rotation like this. Right. And its path is somewhat changing. Now we see this side this element here I'm just making shapes really all right Let's see this side like that um, um, let's uh, delete this now this asteroid timing is, is may not work with the staccato anime timing that I've been doing but okay so now we're gonna kind of cheat the asteroid out so it's rotating this way so let's have the rotation here like this like this All right that's enough okay the rest of this guy it's going to be super easy, but I'm going to go to the next key because I need to remember my placements of the asteroid in relation to the guy. So the next key, we kind of had him, it'll just be a straight line like that, really. That's all it is. I go to erase the straight line and I create more lines right so this we're gonna remove okay and then the final one I don't even think he's really gonna be there let's just have it out here so not where we had it Okay. Okay, so that's now I'll start start just throwing in some in-betweens of the asteroid. But we see we've got like this kind of thing now, right? So he's here, he's here, and he's here, right? So let's start making this happen. So I've got Two frames between this and this so I'm just gonna deal with it like thirds right so because there's two spaces I want it to be a linear movement right so I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna put my first third in okay right see understand what thirds understand animation law and it's all straightforward right spacing what kind of spacing I'm going to put in there. Okay, this can come here like this. All right. I can be quite loose with that. It's okay. All right, so that's one third. All right. So let's get rid of this guy because we've already got it on the onion skin to do the next third. All right, so that's this third. All right. Now here you could build a 3D object 
okay with your blender or whatever if you so inclined and use it for the dead stuff because that's where it's best used you know real animation is the illusion of life when you're doing dead objects it's okay to use other mediums other than drawing right so now we're gonna put a halfway in between here and here right so this is gonna come halfway in between like this this way this way this way this way this right this is going to come halfway in between here so i got to find that line i made doesn't really need to add up we all know i'm being rough but I want it to kind of look like it adds up. Okay, there, right. That's it. No, not quite. We've got thirds to do. So I'm going to get this fellow here. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to look at this, put the onion skin on. So one third is going to be here. Maybe a little bit more, right? And the next one is going to be here like that and then we're straight all right and then we're on a half hair like this right. gone done right um, let's have a look so we got the um, we got the guy coming in he avoids that and he goes away right zoom 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 right vroom, zoom zoom away right so let's put it real time real world uh things so it's like zoom zoom and out okay so we use anticipation logan and we play with the the camera to go around and involve ourselves with the character right so that's the bare bones of it okay it would take me the rest of the day to draw this perfectly in beautiful detail and whatever and that would it that that would be it okay i may throw in a few extra in-betweens here and there to make it work even nicer but that would be it um, so you can see just how straightforward and easy it all, it all is um, when you're doing it that way um, right time to look at other people's work but before I do do I'd like to remind you that, that you're watching these skills and these streams um, that uh, Logan actually is a member of the AMB Animation Real Animator Training Library, the world's best learning resource in the art of hand-drawn animation. You've seen me do this. I have created a training library of videos for you to become great, become what I call a real animator. And that's kind of like the majority of things you see me looking at in this Facebook group are uh, posts from Real Animator Training Library members. Now, I do not guarantee feedback. That is out of the goodness of my own heart. The Real Animator Training Library is a standalone product. It is the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation where people follow my step-by-step -step exercises. If you go to ambanimation.com and simply click on Real Animator Training or join the Real Animator Training Library, you will be taken to this page which will give you this video uh, showing you all about the library. Um, you've got information to read about the library. You have this video broken up into separate videos showing you all the different archives because it's a training library of archive courses where you follow along with me. Now you've seen me just knock this out. You can try and follow along, but it's naive because you won't really know what I did. OK, you can you know, it might feel nice, but remember what I said. Winners get pleasing results, focus on pleasing results. Losers focus on pleasing methods. 
The methodology was completely shrugged over as I very quickly gone through this. So copying me and getting this will not really help you so much if you don't have an understanding of the processes that I utilize, the animation law. So each one of these archives will take you through those processes. You have a basics archive, an intermediate archive, an advanced archive, and an anatomy archive. You also get other you, uh, random lectures. There's also a different uh, archive entirely, uh, library entirely for the fun stuff like this. Um, so you can click on join now and you'll see that you you can either choose between training archives which are these step-by-step -step courses or edutainment archives which are uh, more stuff like this where you see me doing stuff like this in greater detail um, uh, if you enjoy just watching that kind of stuff these are a lot cheaper uh, because they're not really courses and they're fun uh, so you can get loads of videos in the edutainment archive. The training archives is where it all is at. We get people from CalArts, people from uh, Don Bluth University, people from Full Sail, people from Sheridan, people who have worked at Disney. If you go down, um, oh, it's not here at the moment. Um, you got people who have worked at Disney who even have joined this archive. You see me giving them some pointers, just like I gave Logan some pointers in one of these streams. So the training, Real Animator Training Library is the world's greatest learning resource. We get people who have been to the very best still coming to learn uh, how to up their game in animation. And you basically, you can either get these archives individually, if you would prefer to buy them individually, or you can buy them in a bundle, which has all of them except the advanced archive, because uh, that's a separate kettle of fish entirely. You need to, you're not realistically ever going to be able to do just knock stuff out like this unless you go through these basics. Um, then you can begin to think about advanced. Now, I know a lot of, I want this to work for a lot of people, which is why it's the, you know, you want to save money and buy the bundle, sure, but the temptation to play in the advanced archive is just too high and I, it just puts people off track. Um, so we need to go through this these course by course and the anatomy archive is often very overlooked look how i just effortlessly knocked out the anatomy of this guy you need to know the human skeleton before you even know muscles and that archive is all about the skeleton and it is very very important uh, because that's the joints are what move and everything else is just shapes right so uh do consider if you are serious uh about uh, becoming a real animator, do consider joining the world's greatest learning resource in the art of hand-drawn animation, bar none, also known as the AMB Animation Real Animator Training Library. Right, now we're going to go back to what we call Real Animator Growth Development and Progress, and we're going to look at some more posts in this group. It was my absolute pleasure to reconnect with Logan Bernard Mitchell um, who has worked his way through my basics archive um, and is now uh, trying his luck with some of the um, uh, his own work. Um, so it's my pleasure to um, reunite with him and give him some pointers. All right, then. Um, let's have a look at Elena. I managed to do a cleaner line, but I didn't manage to get some of the volumes right. I did the mistakes there. Going to try cleaning the varied head turn, too. I think I remember seeing this. No, I remember. Let's let's I, rem I remember commenting on one of your videos as well. Um, well, yeah, this is I, I did ask you to tidy it up. Yes, there are some volume issues, and it seems to me like I'm not going to linger too long on this, Elena, because what Angela told you in that thing is exactly why the volume issues occurred. In the in the next comment further up, here, um, when you clean up your animations, you clean up the keyframe first. I'm surprised that you 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 haven't really grasped that at the moment, Elena, because I think even in the basics archive, I do talk about that. But there's I do give you there's a lot to focus on when doing that head turn exercise that to lock it down perhaps you know you, you're you're missing those points but it is there is an order and angela has very um has given you that order there's not as i said there's nothing daniel shared this video where i actually issued a cleanup commission to one of my members to clean up some of my animation uh it's a good video but 
there's you know the hierarchy um, always is if i was going to clean this up i would go to the extreme frames first uh before doing all of the in-betweens or any stuff like that um uh and make sure that they're all solid so why i came here was not to scroll through that why i came here was to always say that the the framework you know as outlined if not in the basics archive definitely in the intermediate archive elena when we start learning about locking down the flower sack because he's easy to lock down is you have your extreme poses so your first pose and your very last pose they have c look they're not adding up at the moment depending on the p position they have to be kind of consistent here's inconsistencies so okay they got to kind of add up right not necessarily have to be exactly the same pose but it's just easier to explain it to you this way then i might have some other extreme ups and then some extreme downs that are defining the arcs and they need to add up with these poses right and then i might have some key poses which change the arcs like an anticipation key here which m makes the arc like this then maybe a maybe a a slow out key okay which changes the position arc further right and maybe a a, a a slow a slow in key which changes the arc right so the key positions will then have to add up right then I will have to think about the breakdown positions. So before we break down the anticipation, maybe we're going to like put a favor out this way, like this, changing the arc even more some, right? Then the simple breakdown here might just be half along here and half along here. So they have to add up. And then your in-betweens will simply go in between, right? So that's the hierarchy. So what Angela told you acts absolutely 100%. Um, so Jung An, AMB told me to review the relation of the up down of the upper body, so I fixed it. I felt a bit confused by fixing it. Well, it's a very confusing thing. It's like a big juggling act, so don't worry about that, So Jung An. The fact of the matter is, is this is what you have after being confused, and that means we are very good because you have got this. You know. Um, if a lot of people were confused and able to produce this, the whole world will be a better place, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, um, Looking good. Um, I think now when you time that out, there's a lot more relationship between the upper and lower. You see the, upper bo the lower body is, is, is going first. It feels like the power. And then that upper body is following. And then we feel, we feel the wave in the body. We now feel... That yes, as that lower portion is coming down, there's some weight to the upper portion, and then that treads down afterwards. So that's really, really good. That's much, much better. Uh, there's a nice harmony between the upper and lower. So um, all it is is to remember, So Jong An, that it's the back legs that are powering this guy, and the arms are then balancing and following through, and we want to feel that when we look at the animation so i'm feeling that now that looks good david martin front run cycle timed and fully in between i made sure to stay focused on my arms hopefully it came out good let's have a look at your front run cycle um looking good david um i don't care about whether his arm is quite uh, fat on one side or whatever um, he feels more like, I guess he does feel a little bit more like he's jogging than he's running. Um, it feels a little slow in places that could possibly be the distance of his, uh, height, his up down. But I'll tell you what, I do not care about any of that. What I love about it. I want everybody to just watch it. And this is why I love teaching real people following real animator training. I want you to really see if you can feel it. I feel it. You've really successfully captured this kind of weight transition. That sh exactly what we were doing with the dog before. That travels from down when the hip connects. And it travels up to the shoulders. 
and the arms feel like they're really kind of swinging in relation to the start of that hip transition, that flick of the hips. That is beautiful. Um, I really, really do think that you've, even though like he could be going up and down a little higher to give him a bit more speed and dynamism in his uh, in his action, but I really feel that you've really come away from this exercise and you've taken on board the things that matter the anatomical aspects of the run cycle um, because the figure of eight in this guy is beautiful. I see the figure of eight in his hips. I don't even, I'm not even slow it down. I see the figure of eight in his hips. I see the figure of eight in his head. I see the figure of eight in his torso. I see the figure of eight in the arms. Everything is a figure of eight arc and it feels lovely. Um, it does have a little bit of... Um, a linear effect to the timing I guess because of the height but that said um, the it has that nice hip transition flick to take away that linear feel overall we feel the anatomy of that run good good work lovely stuff um, Okay, so Selena Nina has now, um, yes, of course, So Jong An. Selena Nina has now tried her hand at the um, advanced archive uh, character turnaround, um, the full body turnaround. This one took about a month, so I think it's time to leave it be and do the lessons again later. I agree, Selena. Thank you, AMB, for being such a great teacher. I love learning about all the anatomy and understanding how to do a character turnaround. Your lessons have been such a blessing. Things I struggled with the most on this test and I will work on are line direction and perspective, keeping my drawings balanced, staying on model. Yes. Let's have a look first. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to loop it. Right, so... Okay, so we have this. I, d I don't think it's on ones or twos yet. I can see that you have struggled in certain areas on this one. Um, particularly in the, the way we transition in and out of the legs with the boot shapes. Um, the face is also... Um, the face is something that you're going to just eventually have to nail... Uh, because you've improved your overall body and figurative work has improved uh, a, a lot. But I can see that it's the faces and stuff that you're going to really need to work on. Um, so the head and face is particularly off model. And we can see that the transition in the limbs, the lower limbs, is not quite working. The upper and rear torso is nice i do feel its abdominals are tending to stray to one side of the body a little too much so now i'm going to look at this so here we have a tendency to get the abdominal shapes out here like here see remember the anatomy uh selena so this outside portion we would have the guy with that remember how that middle section came in and that represented the 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 limb the rib cage and the first set of abs and then the abs that would come here with the belly button so all of this i can't quite remember the way i drew it in the video but all of this would be hair right but you're having a tendency to want to add more to the side which is flattening it and making it feel like his abs are kind of a little bit out of whack so again that's the anatomy thing um whereas here it's fine um again balancing the chest balancing the chest muscle appearing and growing uh whereas this chest muscle feels a little bit long in relation to this one from this particular angle um it's about keeping the illusion of where the nipple is placed in order to you see here they're placed evenly. So if I had if I had something like this 
Selena. It's again, this is get, getting your head to think of the illusion of three dimensions, right? So if I had this, right? And I had this here and this here. Let's just give him these, right? Right, like, like this, right? And then I want to turn him, right? I want to turn him this way, right? So the center line is going to be here like this, right? So the, sh the, the clavicle is going to be along the middle, along that line like that. We're going to think about the side contour of the body, right? And then this is going to be here like this. But we're going to have to think about the side contours of the body, right? Coming around like this. Right? Like this. Now this is where the problem can happen of is the chest too big or too whatever on this side. So we then have to understand where this is going okay and the deltoids coming in right and then we can create so see how we've got this i don't know if i told you this in the video but in the video we did in so much detail in other ways but i'm giving you an extra thing kind of like i can think about now this is going to be on this side right and it's going to come in so i can think about distributing that chest okay in a in a more even manner right to get the to get this the the shape that i'm looking for right so even here it's a little bit out so i'll bring it in right and that's how we get we introduce this line here like this and we bring this here right? so we start thinking about this shape becoming this shape right, right. You see this is all in that video um, but Selena don't worry you're building cells okay you're building cells you're at a very very important stage I'm just gonna talk to you on camera right now uh, because because I've worked, I've worked a lot, a lot with, with you and I don't want you a very important stage Selena right what happened with you was what we call exponential growth okay some people they just grow they just grow like this but you went exponentially like this and it was it is amazing but the thing is whether you go like this or whether this guy is going like this doesn't matter you're all continuing to grow so now you're going through this phase right so don't for whatever reason where you feel you're struggling or because don't look back and think before i was doing so well and now i'm finding it hard that's not what I don't know if that's what you're doing, but just in case I'm having this little talk to you because I don't want that to happen. That's not happening. OK, all that's happening is you're experiencing growth in a different way to before. And it's not a bad way. OK, because you're having to learn things that you are not capable of doing yet. And that is a very important part of the process. OK. So whatever, how it happened before and how whatever happened before, don't, please don't compare, okay? Just understand in order to stay motivated that it's very important and it's got nothing. Don't place a negative on it or don't place a positive on it. Oh, I did so fast before and now it's, it's a little bit of a struggle. This is the way it always is. And that's, it's not even a plateau. Some people like to define this, oh, it's a plateau. You need to break through the plateau. You need to work. It's not a plateau. It's an essential part of the process, okay? So it's, it's very, very important. And I'm just making sure that you understand this, just in case. You may already know all this, and I might be wasting my time by telling you this, but just in case you have that niggling little thing at the back of your mind, I'm here to reassure you to say, boot it away and stay doing what you're doing right okay so 
the main these bodily issues are the the lesser ones um you've kept uh the the arms are pretty nice and how you you you've tried to transition the the muscles in there again the balance of the left right remember how these drawings need to work in inverse his shoulder on this side you see let's have a look at him this way oh it doesn't I've got away yeah so this shoulder on this side works less as good as it does on this side so the drawing didn't flip in inverse quite as nicely right so that that that's why we're getting this strange balance so then we've got this side and this side right although you've handled his back nicely and his pants nicely um so again the flatness in the face um we really want these eyes and again you're doing this with your contour drawing you really want you really want okay the eye to be inserted inside the face right like that and we covered that in the other kind of lecture like that right and this goes and then the jaw comes off like this right so this gives his this gives his face some dimension right here would maybe more back here right this gives his face some dimension right so you see when we draw the eyes in there the eye is gonna sit you see this goes up as if it's going away and around as if it's gonna go this way right right and again we want to create that impression like this is coming in he could have these lines here right but it's all to help this this is going out this is going away contouring all to kind of help that illusion right that we have so the brow then sits on top of that coming straight to create the illusion now we want the brow to go around as if it's going around the back of his head this way right here like that and come in now we come out and we can put a little stub there if we want to have where the cartilage remember you gotta remember how i said this formula is great for the animation and it's not you know i don't want you to then just do nothing but this remember we've had that talk before this is all based on the real anatomical features right so then the cheek comes around here like this right now let's just put his lips in right a square in there like this underneath see my chin i'm gonna bring in just a little bit like that right ear comes around like this maybe just watching me draw it well now this is the temple bone right so we're gonna come out here to this is like the zygomatic arch it's coming back so we're gonna put our hairline on there we're gonna come around we're gonna come in the middle like that right then we're going to come off the sides like this in now it's my character so I can draw it effortlessly that's fine but just you watching 
me do this in another context might help you understand that contouring a little bit, you know, of the face. So we have, we want everything to feel set in, set out, set down, okay, out, down, in, this kind of thing. So, and then obviously what happens in the boots is the shape, the, it is a challenging one, a very challenging one, but it's, it's successfully, what's happening is, is your legs are lengthening and then you're losing the width, okay? It's very important, and I know you're studying musculature at the moment, uh, Selena, but it's very important to understand that in order for those legs to be cheated and to work the way they do, now... We need to remember how I spend a lot of times in the video talking about it's all about the pelvis, right? I'm going to draw a pelvis a little bit nicer for you here, right? So it's all about this iliac bone, right? Coming into this pubis bone, the ischism bone comes from, from around there, right? Now we've talked about this in the video many times. But one more, just, just to help you, is the sartorius muscle comes around. It's all about this knee now. The sartorius, the gracilis, all right, coming here. Then the rectus femoris. Then up here, the tensor fasciae latae to the side with the iliotibial tract, coming where the gluteus medius is and all of that is, right? Around here like this. And then that tendon's here the rectus, femoris tendon, the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis, abductor magnus brevis, blah, 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 right? So then we have the gastric nimius, okay? And then the tibialis anterior, right? Which we're just gonna deal with like that. Now, on the in, you, we'll see the leg from a different angle, but the same deal. Let's turn his leg out, right? So let's change his, let's have this kneecap Sartorius will be coming under and around. Gracilis will be coming through this. So it's all about these shapes and these shapes and being able to understand what's going on. Rectus femoris, right? right here. Now this would be the gastric nimius coming in here. The um, biceps femoris muscle will be going around there like this. Uh, tibialis anterior here. Achilles tendon at the back. So then we have the glutes, okay? Gluteus maximus will be coming around this side over here like this, right? So this is where all of this, and then this is where that abdominal region is, okay? Where this is in line with the lower belly, with the iliac, right? So these do come here that actually would be up more up here with the upper rib gauge like this right so it's very very important um, to grasp those muscles in those dimensions but ultimately selena this has been a process of building brain cells so what I would have preferred you do, okay, Selena, what I would have preferred you do is not try to be so clean with the line drawing, all right? Because as you're cleaning this up, I know that you know that this isn't quite right, okay? So let's work with rougher lines rather than cleaning something up that we perhaps know isn't quite working. So if we can get it working with more rougher, sketchier lines that are kind of hitting the mark better than these final lines, you're saving a lot of time, okay? Don't fall into the trap of presenting your work as finished, clean work. Um, you've, you've actually been improving your line work by doing this, but I don't think your line work needs much improving for cleaning animation up. To be honest with you, I think you're pretty decent at that. So let's focus on <coughs> things like line direction, perspective, keeping my drawing in balance, 
and staying on model. So the next time you do your work like this, Selena, give it a break, give it a rest. Let's keep it looser and focus on these three things that you're telling yourself to focus on as opposed to taking all that energy. Remember what I said. We all have the same amount of energy. It's where you're focusing it. Okay. Some, while I'm here right now doing this, somebody else is focusing that money, pumping muscles and building bigger, beautiful muscles than me. While I'm here doing this, somebody's focusing on investing stocks and crypto or whatever and making uh, lots of money. While I'm here focusing on this, somebody is focusing on preparing an amazing meal, a party. Somebody's focusing on giving birth, blah -de blah blah Whatever you're focusing on, that's what you're going to get, right? So don't expend extra energy in areas that don't, where it doesn't need to be expended, like the clean line. Divert that energy in your weaker areas, which need to grow. Um... Let us now go forth um, and look at double suspension gallop from Guo. I hope I said it right. Good to see him posting again. Nice. This is better than the previous one. Better than the previous one. Again, though, just like with Sojong, I would like to feel his rear legs coming higher than his front portion. It feels like his front portion is not quite... No, actually, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's not bad at all. I do feel his, his neck is a little long and static. But that's actually taking away. If I hide his head with my hand off screen, let me loop this. Um, yeah, those that body's great. No, scratch that. Also, because I can see the insides and you haven't erased them out, it's diverting my eyes on isolated body parts. If I look at the, it as a whole, the front and back work nicely and the arch and the spine works nicely. It's just when I look at the individual drawing underneath of the of the chest barrel and the and the hip box, uh, my eyes start looking at the two, and uh, it really doesn't matter. I actually think this is a really good test. Um, um, yeah, I kind of like that actually. Um, not much to say. You've pretty much. You've pretty much got it down as it is in the archive. His neck might feel a little bit that where it should be stretching and squashing. We don't really feel it. So his neck feels a little stiff and static in comparison to the to the rest of the body. But I would say that um, overall it's good work. You've, you've pretty much followed the exercise as is. Um, Yeah, it's a difficult one, the double suspension gallop. Um, to get the power. So, yeah, no, I think it's good. It would be interesting if you erased these out. I think you'd be have, have a much more pleasing test to look at. Sometimes looking at all the skeleton underneath, especially when it's to the same definition as the uh, exterior line it can be a bit distracting but I think it's good I don't have much to say about that this is far superior to the previous uh, gallop you posted where the spine uh, didn't quite work excellent work excellent you're, you're marching along this uh, intermediate archive at an incredible rate actually and you're doing some really good work so um, good stuff Marco Franco primary and secondary action in between looped. Let's have a look. Okay. Nice. Nice. The, 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 the main issue I see is at the start, 
where we feel where we go from hair to hair it feels like his see his body is sliding backwards his feet aren't placed so it feels awkward just before he steps back there's a whole shift in his body and you see we go from we go from a normal to a squashed position right and that's the way it should be because he's bringing his arms together but because you've got this little shift on his body sliding beforehand right um it then creates the illusion that the character is warping in volume as opposed to nicely stretching and dis uh, distributing his weight so that for me is the weakest area of the test marco um just just i think it's you know this is again down to locking down keys and extremes you know keep making sure our character is is not sliding on the floor especially as he's about to take a step back because it just spoils the illusion and uh, makes him feel now from here on in it's great right so the little bit of preparation um transition between here and here is he's, he gains a little mass but it's all right you kind of pull him back into place um, those kind of mass weight gains and losses are fine actually you know even Glenn Keane does them but that's no reason why you should lower your standard but uh, so I'll just point them out this sudden deformation in his back isn't quite working okay it's a little harsh it could be more it, it feels flat right he's a round guy so let's feel the round twist in his in his thing rather than like this sudden harsh line in him like this right um so we have that um good good nice nice play with the squash and stretch again some of your shapes are better than others um but overall it moves well enough to to carry it through that that, that but i want you to watch that first bit really spoils it marco first little kind of shift on the cat just takes away the the whole solidity of it the rest of it is nice okay the 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 the, the step back the thrust the anticipation and then the thrust this is good uh just a little bit careless in places but um uh overall pretty good quick question i'm thinking of creating a short film i've got some of the storyboards should i create a script as well well have the script before the storyboard i mean um how would i go about creating one um kevin silver just um watch my santa series okay um i would say uh kevin, kevin silver, silver. You're, you've got the library exercises. You're focusing on trying to be a, a, a great animator, but not your, your heart is also wanting to make your own projects. I would say rather than trying to go and be all professional and try and learn all these different disciplines about script writing, storyboarding, layout, and all those things where, um, where uh, they're all different disciplines entirely to animation, uh, and you just want to go and do something and have fun, I would say do it in a very intuitive way for the time being by watching that Santa series that I've done um, to give you little snippets and insights as to professional practice, but not going into the professional practice. Because once you go into that professional practice, you're completely changing your direction and then you're heading down another route. So you got to be clear what is it you want to do. Do you want to make anima good? Do you want to be a good animator, a real animator? Do you want to make films? Okay, because they're very, very different things. A lot of the animation directors and people at Disney, Gary Truesdale, Kirk Wise, John Musker, Ron Clements, you know, I'm talking about those days. Um, they, they, they weren't even animators. I mean, the most famous name for years in animation, Walt Disney, the guy wasn't particularly an animator, you know. So do even Miyazaki, Miyazaki's not an animator. So do stay focused on what you want to do, but if you want to, if you want to have fun and try things, then understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because if you want to go about doing those in a very, very professional way, 
you're going to have to change focus, change gear, because storyboard, script, layout, prop design, character design, you know, is extremely important. You know, even if I said Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, is Humpty Dumpty a, a school kid in the 18th century? Is he a cannon on a, on a castle? Is he a, is he a fat cat that's sitting on a wall uh, and somebody sh throws a shoe at him in the night? Um, what is he? What's the time period? Okay, now are we going to feel sorry for Humpty Dumpty or are we going to feel hatred or animosity for Humpty Dumpty because that's going to dictate our camera angles, that's going to dictate the character design, that's going to dictate everything. What about the lighting? What about the whatever? And all of these different things I'm telling you is a different discipline entirely that'll take months and years um, to be proficient at. Okay? So that's why I did that Santa series, to inspire people to, to have a go and to follow my lead. But also, as I, every time I'm doing it, I'm reminding them this isn't the way a pro does it. Okay? It's the way I do it, and I'm a pro, but you're forgetting I can interchange between my hats. I've been a story director. I've been an animation director. I've been a character designer. I've been all these things over the 20 years I've been in the industry. So I give you little flavors of it in that series. But for you, where you are, where you're starting, you have to be focused on the one thing that you want. Okay, that's my advice to you. Bum, 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 bum. Daniel Garcia, I made a study of my character for my dialogue this week. I was able to refine some of my design choices as I went through the different poses. You can see the progress from my earlier sketches from the beginning of the year. Let's have a look. Um, he's almost looking like Gary Oldman there. These drawings are better. These drawings are better, Daniel. Um, one thing I would suggest, just looking at little things, is the shapes of shadow. But let's first have a look at your... Um, let's first have a look. Okay, he looks like a goat man. Now these ears, you need to think about the anatomy for the ear, the cartilage to really, at the moment, they're feeling kind of like cloth. Um, curved up, tip of brow. Okay, so you're working stuff out here. Okay. Excellent. You're thinking about costume. See, Daniel's giving a little, having a little bit of a play. Exactly. This goes nicely into your Kevin Silver, into your thing. So here was his earlier sketches, I can see. Right. Um, okay, so two things. One of the things, I like these drawings. Um, I like the hatching. One of the things I'll suggest to you, which I always suggest, let me just quickly take this hand here, right? Right, let, let me just, okay. All right, let's have a little hand here like this, right? So, so let's say that you've got your hand here, right? That he's holding whatever he's holding, right? Now the hatching is good and all that. Um, but it's, you're going to want to focus on your shapes of shadow, Okay, which is going to be a lot better for you, right? So let's have just a kind of shape of shadow. So we're going to make that shape of shadow, and then we're going to hatch into that shape of shadow. So they've, they've got a place to be, Daniel. Okay, they've got a place to be, right? So we're then going to create other shapes, right? So that's the first thing, right? At the moment... You're, you're, you're just drawing lines that just feel like they're floating. So if they have a guide place to be, then it's going to be better. Now I'll give you some quick points about this guy's face here. Was, um, in working out this thing and the cartilage of the ear and all that. So it's good that you've done some research. And now you're trying to like formulate a face on the guy. 
so let's let's look at his skull right it's it's gonna basically have a human skull right so but his nose is gonna his nose is kind of the same but his nose is maybe gonna be a little bit different a little bit like a an animal's skull as well so we're gonna have this bone coming a little bit more further out into those front teeth right so the maxillary portion is going to be a little bit different but he's going to have a zygomatic features which are kind of similar to what a human uh, with the nasal bone is going to be coming here actually up here like this right and then the rest is going to be pretty much like a man right so let's let's think about this right the zygomatic is going to come to the side come to the side and then his teeth right he can have four incisors and long canines or whatever see then he's got his jaw which is going to be like a human jaw right so he can have this kind of thing right right so that's that's the kind of skull i envisage for your guy right um so the nasal kind of cavity is here the cartilage is gonna go to the sides kind of like that right um so then we're gonna think about the eyes you got like these kind of square eyes so let's let's think of the eyes as the square shape I have his eyes a little bit more than one eye with the part to give him that animal feel right now we're gonna put some bags in there like that All right. so he's gonna sit his eyes in there now his brow his brows are gonna sit let's kind of divide them like this right I kind of divide his brow give him kind of like this matted feel right woolen i don't know if he's a sheep or a goat or something but i think of this chunk here and coming round the back like that now we have the nose so remember the cartilage of these animals goes like this and then it all goes around the side so you've got this kind of pig style nostril so the nasal cavity is here the nasal bones gonna shoot down like this so we're gonna think about going in to that but you're kind of joining it at the front so let's do that let's add something there as well i want to respect what you've done you've done your research so we've got this guy coming like this so it's kind of square like but coming out actually like this coming around and the no nasal cavity will be coming in like this i'm tempted to bring this in because i just think it's a nicer shape right. then we're going to have the this coming around the side like this so i will from a cartoon perspective i will bring it in more in like that right and then we could think about um adding some maybe some ruffles in there whatever so then his lip he's actually your guy's got a uh, his foremouth i made my guys maxillary portion too low so your guys would be he'd have more uh, is it be higher like this right so okay we can do that we can have a higher lip like this now his mouth is going to probably come more to the side hang off like that right with his bottom lip coming like this right so now he's going to have his cheekbones coming in here 
coming off here. Now we're going to think about the ears. So the ear, we're going to think about the cartilage shape. Okay, so we're going to think about this being straight. Okay, and you actually have this in your thing. It's going to be kind of like hard hair. So the so this is going to curl back this way. And then the tagus is going to come out here. And the back of the helix is going to curl around this way. The concha and the greater inferior crust and the anti-helix is going to come out to give it this kind of feel. Right? So the same thing, right? I'm going to bring this back, bring this out, right? Bring this in and around like this. Now I'm going to give him some lids, right? Now his beard kind of you kind of got this chin coming in like this and the beard comes around off it so I'm going to play with that now I'm going to think rather than doing lumps like what you've done I'm going to think of like a big block Daniel and I'm going to think of bringing this in and then we're going to create the, the, the lumpiness out the side of it like this right and then we're gonna vary the lumps like like this right we're gonna do the same on this one gonna vary the lumps like that so so then we got the guy's hair so again the hair is gonna come in like this and around and again, we're going to have to think about the shape we want. So maybe a hexagon or a hexagonal shape. And then I will want the hair to kind of come down like that. So again, I will vary the lumps or the bunches of hair. Then you can maybe come and put in some things coming off the side. To make it more so like that, right? And here we want to think about the bulge of the skull, okay, coming across the side. I would then have to go back and look for ways to make it more appealing, because right now while I'm trying to follow the anatomy, there's there's some the stuff about it that I would want to. I would want to make think about to make him more appealing as a design right um, but just from the basic thing from what I've seen that you've given me um, hopefully that'll help you when you come back to looking at this guy here think about those shapes um, in relation to the anatomy of the guy so you can have a a better understanding of the skull or whatever um. du, 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 du. but great post Daniel um. Dylan Doster let's see this I expect it to look awesome yep looking fantastic i do feel he could be going a bit higher and lower off the ground dylan but it's so clean and tidy and solid and and so full of um life there is a little bit of a thing going on with the neck there that's like an elastic band that's not quite working when it's in between um but everything else like the little the head is just beautiful the consistency and the his beak is deforming and shrinking a little bit but it's so well done that you kind of forgive that i'm just going to get to the bottom of this neck okay ah uh, i guess now my thing does it as well dylan i grow and shrink the neck as well but i guess your balancing here is his neck is just too small 
in relation to the to the to when we sh when we increase it and then when we shrink it again and grow it again it goes up higher and it just the mass balance there and height balance is just a little bit too um drastic which we get this toying elastic band feel in his neck which is does kind of spoil it a little bit but on the whole my man you should be super super proud of yourself the timing the nice arch the curl arc the curl of his head up get the bounce you know were it not for that neck uh, the bounce and the head is just beautiful um the flapping of the feet is lovely the bounce of the tail the consistency of the patterns on the tail is excellent you followed the exercise extremely well um just took your eye off the ball which i didn't even notice the first time you posted so i guess this is one of those things that what happens when we put when we in between things uh we find out ah one of the keys was off it happens even when you're at a high level so um uh going back to the person asking about in betweening hierarchy and also going back to the person asking about ones and twos at the very beginning um well this is sometimes when you got more frames you expose issues whereas when i did the silver surfer thing i was using less frames and moving a lot so i could get away with a lot of stuff okay creating the illusion as if it's all good you know but the more you in between it the more you tr the information you put into it the more you expose that the illusion is not as strong as it could be so this has been a very very successful test and a great entrance into the advanced archive dylan you should be super proud of yourself this is a fantastic uh exercise i look forward to the what the next few sets it's going to be very interesting seeing you handling the character rotations um i think you're going to do a good job awesome work not much to say about that other than that Okay, Alex is putting more with his lumbar spine movements. Um, I found it more challenging than the cervical spine. I feel I have a good solid grasp. Um, I'm going to move on. Okay, so let's just have a quick look. This video is unavailable, Alex. Probably all set to private. They should be on... Uh, unlisted but it doesn't matter alex there's not really much i can say about the anatomy archive exercises this more a, a rite of passage it's a process of understanding for you so your sharing that hair is just you know it's just you're sharing where you are at the moment and you're just going to keep moving forward um in a month's time this you won't even be thinking about this stuff but you definitely will be feeling it that's for sure um selena nina hi friends here are my face studies for the week i tried the contouring exercise yes i can see it made me more aware of what direction i was i can see that this is really helping you selena okay this is really helping you now we need to be careful about yes under eye is working better yeah under eye um i don't want you just to place lines I want you to really really feel I want you to really really feel the the contouring don't don't I'm not saying that it is but it still feels like you, you're putting a lip here right you're putting some lips here feels like you're going like this right guess okay um, but I want you to really you know feel the peak of that really try to now i'm just making this up but i want you to really really slow down slow down you know really really try to feel this one might come this way 
right what's going on this one hmm this one no okay you see inquire selena inquire okay don't and this is what i want kevin silver to do i don't just want it to be become a case of okay here's my head right right here's my head right i've got i've, I've got a head whatever it is right here's my head now I'm gonna just do what I know right I don't want it to just be this I'm not saying that it is but I can see a danger of that happening right as we do this right oh yeah 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 slow down inquire Okay, inquire about what you know about the anatomy as well. Okay, slow down. Make inquiries. That's what I would like, the direction I would like that to go in. Um, good, again. Again, slow down on that eyelid. Okay, the eyelid may be a little bit more okay but this is a good start this is a good start Cameron black good Cameron good to see some blue pencil work good much better much better much better very good and of course Gandalf 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 <laughs> he's using the same pens as me you star yeah, Cameron, I like the blue pencil, okay? This one's a bit less successful, but, you know, I like the blue pencil. Good. We're getting better. We're getting somewhere. Good. Much better. Much better, Cameron. Keep going. Yeah, the shapes of shadow with the pencil. Yes. I made you draw in pen, and now when you switch to pencil, we're getting... Yes. Yes excellent keep drawing in pen as well to force those those uh, uncomfortable choices but when you have the 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 softer you know decision making process of the pencil it's more forgiving and your drawings are looking yes yes selena this is a good contouring thing he's trying to figure out the direction of the shadow on the bone and he's really you can see he's really tried to use his brain there to to make that work um, excellent a, a great set Cameron much we see some definite growth there superb Kevin Silver I'm just gonna glance at these um, I would like you to use more line choices yes these are looking a lot better they're more three-dimensional we can see that you're, you're get, they're actually some of the best dimensional drawings I've seen from you but I want you to, to stop being so I want you to use more lines, okay? Um, I don't, again, the mentality on all the drawings forums from from people who really should work on their own drawings before giving advice to others is, is don't, don't scribble, don't search, whatever. But I can't help but feel that like for you, we need to search a little bit to find our angles okay you need to search a little bit to find your angles right don't try to be so okay this is the line and you know be you know maybe a little no i want to see some go look at glenn Keane's drawings kevin glenn Keane's drawings i would like you to to look at glenn Keane's drawings and look at the searching uh, yes, they're definite, but there's a, still some no, no, no. Maybe hair, maybe, maybe hair instead. You know, maybe, maybe hair. This is what I think will be good for you. All right, to get you away from this very, very, you know, gamital process. See again, hair. If you'd have searched, you would have found better facial balance. Okay, don't try to commit so much. 
it's it's not you it's we're not able to do that at this stage so don't force it okay yes you're trying to contour which is good but let's be more searching at the beginning of this stream Kevin I gave a very crude quick example of how I draw with a pencil think about that all right when we do this Angela's working on the four-step human walk now I told her what to do I hope that she is going along that line good Angela but I didn't meant to I didn't mean to rub out his whole body okay because we want to see that your shapes are working because you haven't You've just kind of put a clean up tracing line over him. His leg is still shrinking. Can you see? He's still, look how long and bent this leg is. You've just drawn an outline. That's not really tidying him up, Angela. We want to have those, you know, we want to have that leg being consistent in size. And now it's grown huge here and it's bent. Okay. And when it's straight, it's so small right when it's more straightened up we need to sort these things out and we you should still have the portions of his body like this right because it'll help you so when i when i said to tidy up those keys i meant to fix these issues maybe you might need to rework that leg a bit but don't do any more in-betweens don't don't take it any further until we get these drawings correct okay the same goes with the hands and the head and all those things. So we need to now look at the arcing of the body. Look how wide and fat it is now, how thin it is. OK, we need to sort all this out with all these different things before we take it any further. This is going to be difficult, um, Angela, but this is your task. OK, otherwise you're just going to be falling back into doing the the old things okay he's a lot more complicated than the flower sack so it's not just a case of doing his outline uh, we've got all these different areas to tidy up um, so let's go back and try to rework that and get those sections in there um, Angela so Jung, okay, I'm gonna leave that one so Jung because it's a software question, not really one for me since I need don't do that software and um, I can't really comment on that. Okay, right, so that's it. We have come to the end of the wall. Uh, if you would like to join this free Facebook global community, uh, you can do so. It is absolutely free. Just look for AMB Animation Real Animator Growth Development and Progress on Facebook. Join the group in the announcements section. You will have nine free lectures from the world's greatest learning resource in the art of hand-drawn animation. I speak, of course, of the AMB Animation Real Animator Training Library, which is where... Um, everybody is doing these tests from so now we can click on the link there and you copy the passcode in above the link and just paste it in there and you are taken to try some of the basic uh, exercises um, you got nine of them the basic bouncing ball the basic swinging pendulum the first video of the four part basic walk um, bones of the foot, bones of the hand, the first video of the two, three part squash and stretch um, or two part squash and stretch, I can't remember, it was done a long time ago an acting class, uh, a dynamic perspective uh, class and uh, an Ask AMB live stream uh, which is pretty much similar to what you see me doing here but we're not really focusing on the any group um, so that is it uh, once again if you are looking to transform your lives if you if your inner being recognizes that you are the real deal that you are a real animator that you love to draw you love to move and bring life to your drawings and you need to just know the techniques of how to do so in a convincing effortless manner then visit amb animation and click to join the world's greatest learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation, bar none, the real animator training library. 
um, you will have this information page if you already know just how damn good this place is you can decide if you want to join the training archives or the edutainment archives uh, the training archives you can get a bundle and save yourself a ton of money by buying the basics intermediate anatomy and lectures all in one bulk or if you prefer to study at your own pace throughout the years because some of these you know depending on how your commitment can take that long for others it can be a breeze uh, you can just buy and try archive by archive um, so that is the AMB animation real animator training library the world's greatest learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation I am now going to go and have a look at the chat before I chime out we've got three hours 15 minute mark um, and just see, see what, what some of you guys are saying uh, and then we are going to um, call it a day give my throat a rest it looks like Akal the warrior has made himself known in the chat good to see you um, Akal would enjoy the uh, silver surfer thing we did right now let me just skim through this chat Michael Elliott, how are you doing, sir? Um, yes, you missed a drawing of the only Shira. Um, I noticed that a lot of animators in the US for TV cartoons have the mindset to work smart, not work hard. And that's what the irony is. Yes, work smart, do not work hard, never work hard. Um, if you put a whole lot of energy into something, uh, but that thing isn't worth putting the energy into then it can be all the hard work in the world but your, your results are not going to be what you want it to you know um so indeed um i've seen something similar on a youtube video the person was struggling to do a run animating it with strokes and had to redo it multiple times on video well yeah yeah i i hope and pray that they will discover the real animated training library uh, usually we straighten up our body a bit okay there we go um, I dislike when people press the undo button after every stroke made yeah well again it's those who succeed are those who make definite decisions uh, have faith and belief in them and follow them uh, those who are indecisive and change their mind too often end up running around in circles and never get anywhere and that's the same for drawing um, Hey everyone, how are you doing? I recall a and B's cutout example he did for lip syncing dogs and it still looked amazing. Well, thank you. Um, nothing in cutout looks amazing, but but uh, I appreciate that, that comment. Uh, I usually put the work in smart. Okay. a and can you show us an example of how to plan one of the really exaggerated rainy, zany animations like the Ren and Stimpy? Okay, as I said, Ren and Stimpy is not... Um, um, zany exaggerated animation Ren and Stimpy is just turn down the noise and there's nothing zany and exaggerated about it apart from the voice actors um, it's just stiff rigid appealing drawings okay moving a little bit and snapping from this pose to that pose you know one exaggerated pose of a guy's eye eyeballs busting out of his head with loads of veins on them is a drawing it's a nice drawing it's not necessarily nice animation um, so we would, I would rather look at a Tex Avery cartoon, uh, Richard Williams, Roger Rabbit, uh, Eric Goldberg, the genie. Uh, if we want to talk amazing, um, exaggerated animation or indeed Chuck Jones, uh, which I did a great, uh, Yosemite Sam. If you go Daniel Angel one, you are, you have it. Okay. Cause I know, I remember you bought it. Okay. I'm going to change my monitors and I'm going to show you. Um, I want you to go to the Real Animator Training Library. Now you're a member, so I want you to go into the dashboard. So you're going to go into the dashboard. Now this is not in the training archives. This is in the... Ed oh man, I'm not even logged into my own library. So this is... Uh, this is your dashboard right so this is not a training this is an edutainment archive 
Oh, and it's warning me that somebody's logged in, right? So it's it's um it's not a training archive, Daniel. It is animation breakdowns and edutainment archive because you don't really train, you just learn. So breakdown set one. We've got Disney Squirrels, Thundercats intro. You want Yosemite Sam, right? So you're going to click on that and you're going to watch this, all right? It's three hours and eight minutes of goodness where you basically watch me study a classic Warner Brothers animation. Oh, well, it's probably like two hours and then there's an hour of chat with you guys afterwards, right? So it's about two hours, 18 minutes. We're still doing this, right? Actually, um, <laughs> no, two hours, 42 minutes. We're still in. So you see what you're going to get, right? You can already see, like, this is what you see, right? You So you can watch this entire stream. So you can see me explaining it here, right? So just go there. Okay, it's an edutainment archive. It's not a training archive. It's all there for you, my friend. So I don't even need to do it again, right? If as a as a as a library member, as a member of uh, the edutainment animation breakdowns archive, you have it. Okay, it's all there for you. Um. Bum, 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 bum. I heard a lot of self-employed artists. Artists do the brain work at the start of the day and then do the part that requires less thinking later on in the day. Um, Hang Ming Hui, there's a problem in life that we all suffer from. It's called overthinking. Right? If I told you 2 plus 2 is 4, right? would you spend the rest of your day figuring out why 2 plus 2 is 4, how those people found out 2 plus 2 is 4, why they do it this 2 plus 2 is 4, why that's 2 plus 2 is 4, why, you know, if I look at those two trees over there and those two trees over there, hey, there's four trees over there, you know, um, you know, no, you wouldn't. But the thing is, is all I tell you is like, you, you basically drain the success system that never fails. Inspiration to action, acquired knowledge, know-how. You basically soak your subconscious with the fundamentals until it becomes an involuntary act, and that's it. What you've said is the same thing. I heard this. I heard a lot of self-employed do the brain work at the start of the day, and then, well, so I'm trying to save you a lot of energy wastage of thinking about the obvious, right? Don't waste your time on that. Don't try and find out. You're on the right way. What this is is insecurity. That Am I doing it the right way? Am I doing it? This guy's doing it. That, that guy's doing it. That way. Well, what about the way I'm doing it? Right? Well, you're a member of my library. You're a member of my streams. You listen to me. You see how easy animation is for me. Not just animation. Real animation. How effortlessly I bang stuff out that destroys big studio stuff so the thing is is like how secure do you want to be you know stop asking yourself obvious questions that you already know the answer to to send yourself in another direction waste of time not worth it okay um ba -ba 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 -bum. Okay, that was Logan Mitchell. Um, McDonald's. I bet you, I'll tell you what, I'll, I could eat McDonald's all week and I'd still be in better shape than a lot of people on this, um, on this uh, horrible keto diet or whatever. Um, yeah, pretty much the front foot is where the... Okay, we're talking about rigged stuff. My pleasure, Daniel Angel One. Yeah, this channel is pure gold. In fact, it's more valuable than pure gold. Um, 
I can see an A and B inspired LN title. I'm summoned to another world, but I'm not the hero, so I'm going to take it subtle with my unique glass reel. I, I wish I knew what LN was, you know. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I tried, okay, I tried puppet, digital puppetry. Um, I learned a bit of how to do puppet. I learned a bit of how to do digital puppetry. Uh, too honestly, I didn't see the appeal with the amount of time it takes to set up a rig and the fact that you still have to animate it. You, you mean you animate those digital puppets or you just manipulate the digital puppets? I mean, let's let's tie some strings to a puppet and pull it up and down. Why is that puppetry and not animation? And why is moving and move, sliding around the, the puppet in a computer? Why is that animation? Somebody please tell me. Okay, because everybody says it so. Okay, well, I guess I'm a god. Get down and worship me, because every because I said it so. You know, it's just just ridiculous, just absolutely ridiculous. Where's the common sense here? This 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 is not animation. It's digital puppetry. No regard. I don't, that's why. I, that's why I just realized. That's why I don't connect with it. It's not what I do. It's not what. It's not. It doesn't interest me. I animate. I draw. I don't fiddle around with puppets. You know. Um, is it me or the new reboot? She got, she. Well, there you go. Um, mm -mm -mm. I was watching a tutorial. Okay, we're still talking about rigging and puppetry. Um, the new. Okay. People now talking about the new Shira and the old Shira. Well, to me, there's only one Shira, so I don't really just completely don't have an opinion on 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 something that's not Shira. Trying to think of a piano piece to give us an example, but I've forgotten most pieces. Okay. Um, okay. Too much talking about that. How to deal with feet when animating a turnaround? Well, the Anatomy Archive is your friend for that. You turn around an entire foot with all the bones in it. Um, Dylan the Destroyer. No, he's not a destroyer. He's not a destroyer. Um... The fourth 4,000 is going to bed. The tiger echo. Um, what are you meowing about, my princess? Hmm? I'm busy streaming. Oh, you want out? Okay, I'll go to get you out, darling. I'm still streaming. Out we go. Come on. No? Okay, I'll tell you what, if I give you some biscuits, so you're going to be quiet. All right, I'll give you some biscuits, you'll be quiet. I'm going to end the stream. I don't think my guys are going to want to hear you meowing while I'm streaming. She doesn't want to leave me, so I'll feed her so you won't keep hearing her meowing in the background. Um... Of course, it'll take a long time to do to do your own series, Silver Sun. But then, you know, you could be like Magpie Kina, who's gone, who's she was a real animator training library inner circle member, and I worked with her on helping her with storyboard and stuff like that. And in the end, you know, she she just wanted to direct, and she ended up just employing a load of people uh, with her own money um, and raising money doing Kickstarters to get her own stuff off the ground, and she succeeded. So um, you could do it that way too, and that'll speed things up. Um, Akka the warrior is there. Um, just going through the chat, almost to the end.
Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Ren, and Stimpy, it's all the same. It's all low brow, cheap, quick, TV, you know, questionably drawn, you know, stuff. So I'm not, you know, as I said, a lot of you might not like the things I say, but that's just too bad. Because the whole reason I'm doing this channel and the whole reason I'm sharing my time and my information is just to raise the standards of hand-drawn animation back to where they should be. And if, uh, if that, that's educating and making people aware of what good standard hand-drawn animation is. It certainly isn't Cartoon Network TV shows. Never was. Never. Ever. Whatever stage of Cartoon Network's history. Even the back to the... Hanna-Barbera days of the Flintstones, however much I loved the show. Betty Rubble, Wilma, they were pretty hot. But, like, they were bad. Animation. Never was it good. Never. It was a good show. Enjoyable, fun, nice designs. It's a different conversation. Never was it good animation. Um, yep, indeed, Zentron. Um... I'll destroy you with my art, says uh, Dylan Draws. Yeah, she's comfortable, Charlene. She's by the uh, she's by the um, heater now, warming up. JP Parks, good to see you. Um, crunching biscuit noises from the cat. Yes. Um, Animation takes loads of compositive and graphic skills as well as editing, also sound with many, many less knowing things. No, that's filmmaking. You you can edit a live action movie. You can edit uh, you can edit an animatic. You can have a motion comic. There's editing involved in there, there's graphic skills. There's graphic skills involved in building the sign to a shop. So let's not you know, there's an umbrella term, you know. Parkinson's disease, dementia, um, Alzheimer's disease, they're all very different. They all need to be treated very differently, but they're all called dementia, you know. So to just call these things animation and then, you know, a lot of people like to justify their bad work. And they justify and they, they, they're so butt hurt that they're not getting anywhere, but they want to defend where they are, even though they're not happy with that they're standing in shit. So the thing is, is basically... You know, the ego comes into play and they say, well, animation is also this, animation is also that. Well, then look at your animation and be happy. I mean, look at the bad arts, look at the dodgy drawings, look at the dodgy movements and then say, well, look at the editing, look at the look at the graphic design, look at the this, look at the that. Well, all I'm looking at is, is the stuff that doesn't work. So uh, I, I got to the chase. R for results, R for real, R for real animator training. Do you want to be a good animator? Yes or no? Simple as. Learn the laws of animation. Learn the craft of animation. Understand what good animation is. Be honest with yourself. And then allow yourself to be good. Step out of the shit. And into the, um, into the thing. Anybody can do their own film by themselves. You can go into a workshop with a bunch of five-year-olds. They make an old film by themselves. It's just as justified. They animated it all by themselves. Little Peter, little David, little Roger, with their crayons, you know, their little cutouts, you know. Animated it, you know, they made little handprints. They made their own film, you know. Somebody, you know, got a chimpanzee to make a mark on a paintbrush, and they sold it in an art gallery for more money than, than I've ever seen, you know. They can say it's valid, it made this much money, but how do you feel about it? That's fine. As I said, you go ahead and do whatever you want, JP Parks. It's not like that. My channel is not here to oppose you or to tell you that you're doing it wrong or that I'm doing it right. My channel is simply here to inspire people to have high standards and to inspire people to reach those high standards. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here to tell you your standards or to give you your standards. I'm here to define my standards and to share those standards with other people that have similar standards and want to reach those standards. That's all I'm here to do. You know, 
that's what I call it. I've got a standard of what I believe real animation is. And I, well, I state what it is and I repeatedly demonstrate what it is effortlessly and flawlessly. And some people might not like the way I do that. It might make them feel uncomfortable. Well, is it me that makes you feel uncomfortable or the lack in standards? And I, that's not aimed at you, J.P. Parks. That's just aimed at the people who don't like the way I say things and don't like the way I do things. Because that's, that's what it's all about. This is hand-drawn animation is the highest art form ever in the world. Those, that's my views. That's my views. And I don't expect that to be anybody else's views. Yet, I have an audience, I have a voice, I'm here on do, using YouTube exactly what it was used for, invented for originally. You know, and if, if I harmonize with other people who have that view, then um, it's an absolutely beautiful thing that I'm helping those people reach the highest possible standards that they can reach. And that's, that's all it's about. It's not about calling anybody else weak or bad or poor. It's just about, it's like, whatever you say about Justin Bieber, the guy is at the highest level. You could say he's a piece of shit or his music is rubbish or, he, you know, he's not real music or whatever. He's super successful. He's the highest level in the music industry. So it's all about opinions. There's no right, there's no wrong. There's just your feeling about it. But this channel gives me an opportunity to synergize and harmonize with people on the same frequency as me regarding high-level, hand-drawn, animated content, also known as what I define to be real animation. Okay? Real animation? What about me? What an umbrella term. Anything can be real animation. There you go. I don't know. He's the only trendy modern singer I can think of. You know me, Zentron. Iron Maiden. That's it. Okay. Right. <laughs> so there we go. So hopefully that won't get people getting offended. Or, or Although in this time it's hard because people get offended about anything nowadays. But, you know, hopefully people will understand what is always... It's, it's just opinions. Yeah. Um, I wish more people would use the free harmony substitute open tunes. I wish more people would just learn how to draw and animate with whatever is they've got. You know, I, I owe nothing. I've never touched open tunes. It's never done me any favors. So why would it do anybody else any favors? Uh, this channel is not just the best place to learn its inspiration and motivation. Um, Daniel F. Faraz, Real Animation Learning. Perhaps go back and look at the Silver Surfer thing and maybe Google the definition of staccato and I'll let you work it out a little bit yourself. Yes, Kitty is still there. She's looking so peaceful. And on that note, I'm going to quit. I've now been going for 3 hours 37 minutes. I enjoyed with the Silver Surfer thing. But I'm going to have myself a hot drink. And I'm going to color in the Shira for the thumbnail. And I'll see you all next week. Keep up working hard. Keep, keep keeping it real. Work hard. Get you those goals. Define those dreams. And achieve those ambitions. Over and out.